Welcome back to Collider Live, the best show on the damn YouTubes. I'm Roxy Stryer. Across from a girl I miss very much, the most evil of all times, Arena. Buenos dias, Roxy. I miss you guys. And you not being it's here yesterday while. felt like pain in my soul. Well, and Josh was here. Yeah. I'm so sad. I, I missed him. I mean, not happy to have <laughs> our, <laughs> our, our beloved John oh, Roca yeah. instead. I'm but happy to have John Roca. I'm yes. happy to have Josh McCook. I, it was great to see him back. Yes. I had him on sports time. It was so much fun. Guys, good. he's going to be here tomorrow, too. Yeah. I know. I'm so excited. So we, we'll get him then. It good. will be the whole good, good, good. crew. Also, Mark Riley in the house. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mark Riley. Hi. Good jacket you got there. Thank you. Dear Mark. Freaking stole it. You good? You have a stole good jacket. Stole it. Because I watched this one. Jacket. It's almost like all of us have cool clothes yeah. on today. I wonder Look why. At this. Look at this I shirt. Wonder why. I love this shirt. Shout out to Heroes and Villains, guys. Again, don't forget, if you were watching the show yesterday, you saw even doper clothes. Actually, equally as dope because right. it's all Heroes and Villains. It's awesome stuff. Um, and right now, I'm rocking... Like, we always go against each other, D. Because well, I'm you're rocking Batman, Batman and, and I'm the Joker. I know, and we always do that. This yeah. is the you're balance of the show we went for. Batman What's left, it say? Sons like, of the Batman? Yeah, Sons of the Batman. That's from Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, yeah it's pretty dope, yeah. but you guys are rocking the track. I got track. He's got oh, uh, you got Star track. Wars. You got I'm, I'm the Mandalorian. Right. Oh, look at that IG-88 shirt. You yeah, are yeah, the yeah. Mandalorian. Guys, heroesofvillains.com. Don't forget to go there. They just released a ton of stuff from Star Trek, Batman, Joker. We're kind of repping it all here. Yeah. Mandalore. Uh, it's awesome. Heroesvillains.com. We are also, because I am so competitive, competing against everybody else in the office. Right. And I want to win so badly. And, right. Okay, here's the deal. Last time, we crushed. Yeah. Last time we did this, Collider crushed. So if you use the code LIVE10, LIVE10, so heroesvillains.com, use the code Just LIVE10, not only do you get 10% off, but we get 10% brownie points. Hey, cool. yeah. And I like really need those brownie points at this mm -hmm. point in my life. Agreed. Like, or just brownies. Please send us brownies. Yeah. Um, yes, also brownies. <laughs> if they've got was. something yeah, in them, I'll we don't them mind laced. that. So yeah. heroesvillains.com, if you want cool clothes like us, be cool kids. Don't forget and about it. And they are actually really cool. I like They're comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're good. They're quality material, the, man. The sweatshirt that I wore yesterday. Yesterday, I don't think you saw it yet, but it was a Trekkie sweatshirt, and it was dope. And Wendy was like, hey, will you leave it here for now just while we're doing this all week? Because I don't want you to forget to bring it in. And she had to, like, rip it off my body because yeah. I did not want to take it off. It Damn. was so effing soft. Did you guys wrestle for it? Easy, it was an uncomfortable moment in the office. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. really like awkward. I didn't want to look, but I wanted to look. But I didn't want to look. But I wanted to look. Stared away, and then you looked back. It's like that gift for that girl. She's like, I think we put. Not gonna lie, Wendy was a lot stronger than I even pictured it. Oh yeah, she's little, but she's stronger than all of us, man. She knows how to sword She won that one, but I'll win the war, Dorina. I'll win the war. I believe in you, Roxy. Unless she hides it from you, then you'll get lost in the war. Scrappy, there were like lightsabers everywhere. Could you all take a vote? Me or Wendy in a fight? Who you got? Oh, Wendy's scrappy. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going Wendy. Cody knows, yeah. about, uh, Cody knows about scrappy. I don't know. I don't want to cross Roxy either. So, Whoa. Cody oh. and Adam would be an interesting fight. Oh, I, 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 I would put Cody up against anybody. I don't oh, know yeah. who would win. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, I've never won he's a fight little, in my but... life. <laughs> just... Do you think Cody's like a wilding? Do you think he just goes, ah! He just Probably. comes running at me like... run and hide Wait. in a corner. Oh, okay. Wait, yeah, have you Where ever been in a fight, Cody? Do you, think he's like, do you think he's like the clown in It? He just goes, ah! He just comes running at you real oh. fast. He actually goes like this. First of all, he, does the, <laughs> he does the dance before. Yeah. Can we rewind? Because I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm from Boston and incredibly scrappy and probably the only one who's been in multiple bar fights. I wait, not see, the room. Wait for the Mexican the explain. Oh, me what and is Wendy. scrappy? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, I don't know. Wendy could have been in some bar fights herself. Wait, what does Scrappy mean? Scrappy Explain Scrappy. Scrappy. Like, like feisty. Like you, you fight dirty. Yes. No, uh, no, no. Did you, did you grow up with You guys don't even know no, what it means. No, I know what Scrappy means. <laughs> scrappy is like when you use your resources and you're feisty. Okay. Yeah. So I have the perfect way to describe this. Scrappy do you know dog? Scrappy do? Yes. Scrappy do. Um, scrappy do. Put him on. Hold put on. Come Tiny on. You guys, you guys keep talking. Come I got to find out if Wendy's ever been in a bar fight. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's no way she has that. We lost our host, you guys. This is how we do it here at Collider yeah. Live. We scream what? in the office to yeah. get the facts. Wait, Cody, have you been in a fight? Uh, yeah, I've lost every time. Aw. Wendy says like she's been in a fake stuff. bar fight. I don't know what oh, that means. Okay. I wanted to follow up, but it seemed okay. like she was busy. Have you guys been in a fight before? Oh, yes, sure. of course. Did what? you win or lose? Uh, Most of the time, one. Most of the time. Most of the time. Beat that ass. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. I could picture you in a fight. Sure. I could picture me in a fight. Yeah. I could picture you in a fight. You can't picture I me. I can't picture you in a fight. Well, <laughs> he gets upset at things. Man. Yeah, I know, but I can't picture him getting, getting so upset that he hit somebody. The only time that really That's happened fair. was in at camp, and I was in seventh grade, <laughs> and I beat that ass. Hey. What did they do to deserve to get that ass beat? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll always remember this. He, uh, we, it was kind of a wrestling thing happening that we're all like just kind of roughhousing the guys, right. and, and you know he got me down there. He, he, oh, he and, on, on purpose, on yeah. purpose. What, what just happened to the show that you said foul. down there, and you said in the D? Like neither of you guys could use the word Fine. penis anymore. He punched me in the dick, <laughs> and I punched him back in the face. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Because he punched me in the dick. Yeah, you don't do that. It was an immediate reaction. He was like, he was like, ha ha, and I went, ha, bam. Yeah. Damn. And locked. It, he fell. That was the last fight you got into. That was pretty much the last fight I got First into. First and last. Uh, so, well, in high school, a lot there was a lot of like, you know, running and yelling and like, I think people were throwing things, and you know I was just like, is. yeah, yeah. I was just. In you the just middle. described a pep rally. <laughs> yeah, it was a pep rally. It, you know what? How Go much states? How much can people fight in Orange County? Answer: Not a lot. Fair enough. They're all Orange County yeah. shelter. Like, hey, what are you doing, fights. man? Hey, what are you doing? You, don't, you better let me go. Yeah. You better let me. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you later. It's all I'll posturing. see you later. You yeah, in the Taco Bell parking lot later. In the 80s, the weirdest thing you had, like what? in high school fights in the yeah, 80s. Oh, God. In high school Broken fights nose. in the 80s, it was just like shoulder to shoulder, the face six, to face. And you're just like, you're just turning in a circle. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to fucking do? What are you going to fucking do? I probably, it was so Then ridiculous. you're just hugging while walking. Yeah, it was probably yeah, this, like, Which is what you really should bumpy. be doing. Because yeah. no one wants to throw and get kicked out of school. So you're just going to spin around and not give any and not give any ground. I, I got kicked out of school once for fighting. Oh, yeah. What? Wait, how many fights have you been in, Roxy? A lot. A good amount, honestly. Oh, not not that not that many under under two hands. But what do you mean by fight? Like literally, like punches, like wrestling, like what 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 is um, the average here? Hmm. Well, first of all, I will say this: I have not been in a fight in maybe a decade. Well, that's so good. I, I, it's not like an adult thing to do. You, I mean, you shouldn't do it as a kid either. But <laughs> you grow up. You can't right, just right. be getting in fights. Like you well, can't get in fights. It's just a lot fights. of work. I'm just too old for it. I yeah. get lazy. Yeah. I don't have F the energy. That. But yeah. when I was younger, for sure, I was scrappy. And but the the one time I got kicked out of school or suspended from school was justified. My parents were really proud of me because this boy, Ronald Rose Crib, that's his name. Oh, 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 put him on blast. That's Crib. a Stephen King. Feel name free to call us, Ronald. Ronald, <laughs> yeah. Rose Crib. Ronald Rose Crib was pissing me off. Uh, we were in the hallways between class, and he took my water bottle and was holding it like because I'm short. And everybody used to make fun of me for being Aww. short. You know, everybody gets made fun of for something. Mm. Oh, I yeah. was a little chubby and short, and I got made fun of a lot. I was really, really picked on when I was younger. And he was holding a water bottle over my head. Can't get it. Can't get it. Can't get oh. it. And I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> and I, just, I, like, I think I slapped him in the face and, like, punched him in the gut or something, and he dropped the water bottle. Uh, That's, Yeah. Good. And I told Go my, for you. Yeah, I went. But down see, the, he deserved it. You know yeah. what? He got suspended as well. I believe, if I if I recall correctly. Have you ever picked a fight? Or are uh, you always the, vic the, um, the victim? Not the yeah. victim, but like you I, know. I I have never. The fight I have never picked the fight. Okay. You've never been the aggressor. Yeah. No. There we go, how, the aggressor. However, it, I've not always been the victim either. Mm. I have joined in on many a fights. Like my. Oh, you friend, jump in. Yeah, because girl. You, I know, but like you can't. Mm. When, the last fight I got into, I believe, was when I was in college at our school bar, the Nino. The Nino. At the Nino. Oh, all right. Um, and yeah, I gotta hear about this. I've seen many fights at the nine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my best friend was in the bathroom, and this girl was trying to get into the bathroom. My mm -hmm. my oh. friend was peeing. Something obviously really intoxicated. Something happened where like sh she like barged into the stall and like hit my friend. I like pulled her off her, but it's all very close and tight in there. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. She like pushed me against the sink and I punched her in the face. Ooh. She got kicked out of the bar that night. I did not. <laughs> so there was a meeting. Way the to play the nine out. Damn, right. totally I know the bouncer. Meeting in, meeting in the ladies' oh, yeah. room is what you're saying. Yeah, there's a meeting in the ladies' room. So, right. so basically, what we're saying here is that we're all animals. <laughs> you know, don't fight, kids. That no. is the moral oh, of the that's story. That's not true. I wouldn't say that. Well, hey, fight, fight if you fight being, if you got to. Fight if, fight fight if, if you, you have to. Fight yeah. if you got to. For sure, I definitely believe in that. You got no one to hold him, no one to fold. The reason I just closed the sentence with the the paragraph that I just spoke. Wow, words this morning, guys. Fuck me. Yeah, the reason that I. And 
ended it with don't fight is because last time on this show, I remember I was talking about fighting for some reason. And I was like, if you fight when you can, man, or whatever I said. And... Oh my God! Did I get shit for like a year for that? What? You're you're telling you're advising children to get in fights. Oh, come on! And I was like, Oh boy! Girl, girl. <laughs> oh, that's, boy. that's why you should start tweeting at people when they comment or on YouTube. Just be like, Oh boy! Oh, boy. It's it, you 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 try to handle it with words. That's what you do. That's you why do. you can't yeah. you, you somebody, can't see me fighting. I try to you, do with words. You hit them back. But if you get yes, if you get if it gets you got to defend yourself. <laughs> The yeah, hopefully you, you have your boys with you, your 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 backup if need be. Uh, I want, it's just like watching Sesame Street for kids. When right? I was uh, <laughs> when I was we unfairly teaching. attacked by Andrew Guy, I did Reading not fight Rainbow. back. That's very true. You did, did not fight back. Yeah, when Andrew, Andrew Guy, Guy attacked, attacked, attacked me. If you had been at a bar, he took the he'd higher ground. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he'd have been oh dead. And he go. Oh, you, what about you? Grew up in Mexico. You must have gotten into some fights, girl. Why? Is that in Mexico? No, Latinos are passionate people. We get into it. What about you, Mexico? Am I right? I can say that. I mean, we are known for being. Boxers we are stuff. passionate. I get yeah, it. it's true. Especially uh, Mexicans. But uh, oh, no, God. we we fight it out in the soccer field. Uh, there it is. Did you no, play? No, no, I did not move. <laughs> I did not move as a kid. I didn't move. I was a couch potato until thirty, and then I started exercising. I love watching chubby? sports. Uh, like when I was a little bit older, not like. You know, like a little bit bigger. You were like skinny a little fat. Bit. You were like skinny fat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like that. Yeah, skinny fat is yeah. the best. No, term. I was a fucking nerd. I played video games and chess Ooh. and musical instruments. Nerd. I didn't. Yeah, exactly. I, I did not. Like, I like your description of I did not move. No, I didn't. <laughs> I fucking hated moving. And I can just picture you just <laughs> on the so couch hard. Like, grabbing your instrument and your video games and just bringing it all to the couch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, I'm just literally picturing the world happening Dorina. around Dorina. She's, yeah, and I'm like she's standing still. Chilling in Mexico, Limpia just sitting puerto. down, eating my taco. Everything else Limpia happened. Limpia tu cuarto. Yeah, Limpia I know. tu cuarto. I was Clean really your clean. quarters? Yeah. <laughs> room. Quarto's room, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah, right. good job, Roxy. Damn. But no, I, I, most I definitely was say. bullied as a kid, but I had my brother there. So, oh, okay, good. So I didn't have to actually good for physically you. buy. Oh, good for me. Yeah. So, like, I had this, like, girl try to oh. always. Uh, like throw shit at me, which was weird. Yeah, I don't just like oh did that little girl. I need to throw stuff at her. This was just like a bully I had, and my brother had to like come in and like sat her down because he was older and like had a chat with her. Yeah, like my brother at like twelve years old, <laughs> like yeah. an adult chat with this other eight year old. See, I always girl. wanted my very brother. disappointed yes. in you, eight year old. So I works. love that though. I always wanted my brother to do that. Did he not? He never defended you. Oh, was he older? My God, he told everybody I was a lesbian. What? Yeah. Is he older than Next you? Time. I love it when I can Why hear he do Cody laugh through the wall. Uh, also, I forgot to say, is Alex here? Alex uh, is coming he'll be here later. Okay. Thank you. Because yeah. if, if he is, I didn't introduce him, which I guess is fine. Right. Uh, Alex, there's no way Alex gets into fights. Yeah, no. my brother told everybody no. I was a lesbian, because uh, why not? Hey. A, a mm. he was trying to, like, fuck with me and B he was trying to make it so none of the guys would want me uh. um, it didn't work so a roundabout way oh, of trying to help I, 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 nice they humble want, brag there no, Roxy no I'm just did saying they want high you school, more? It, no it didn't work in terms of it did the opposite if you hear somebody think about high school boys oh, yeah, she's yeah. a lesbian well, oh turn that's her. hot I can get that I can, like, turn I can get her in another one yeah, that's what yeah. They like, I can so, turn her so stupid uh, yeah, D, no, I can turn her. he for sure yeah. didn't stand up for me he didn't want me to go by his last name when we were in high school mm. he like, oh my god uh, Damn. oh god now make we're best friends name. but like he could not stand me how does that make you feel Roxy <laughs> is it show me you, on the doll would, would you like to would you like to dedicate a song to your brother <laughs> here Mark. on coast 103.5 <laughs> how, how many days have I here. listened to you bitch about something no I know <laughs> she's in She's, uh, this I, is bar fight. You, think, you, eyes, you like, think I know? She has got me on target here. <laughs> Do you think I'm I'm making fun? No, I am <laughs> legitimately fight. wondering how does that fight. make you feel? So let's take a vote. Is he making fun of me? No, I just I'm thought not it voting. would be. I thought I. <laughs> it's the holiday season. We're staying out of it, we all <laughs> guys. But you I went learned... back to because this is what I wanted to bring up. This is Cara doing in the Mandalorian. You're done with you. Your best friends now. When did it change? Was it college? Was it high school? Was it before that? Because I had the same thing. Because I had the same thing with my sister, <laughs> where we fought 
so many times, and then the holiday season would arrive, and guys, I kind of can't stand him today. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Your brother what do Riley. I do, Riley? What? Bro- what do I do? Are you having uh, flashbacks with yeah, your brother? You're speaking yeah, it. I like that you're speaking it out loud, oh, using your words. Help. What did you do, Mark? Help. I have no idea. What uh, did you just show, show her. Up. Show a baby Yoda meme. That'll make everyone happy. I thought maybe if we opened up the conversation. <gasps> she doesn't like that. I love you it. You don't like his voice. No. no. I love it. It's wow. his radio voice. It no. says Coast 103.5. Here it's yeah. the holidays on Coast 103.5. Get me out. And yeah. this song right is now. coming yeah. from you. Cody. From Would you Roxy's like to brother. throw a punch? Oh, <laughs> and we have Dashing what Through do I do? the Snow. Roka, take over. No, <laughs> uh, Bing Crosby. Move us out. <laughs> That's Riley with his long-distance dedication to Roxy Stryer. Yeah. <laughs> and her brother, Chip. Or is it Chet? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> From hopefully Weird they, Science. Hopefully they Scott. figured it out on this holiday season. On this holiday season. The holidays are here for giving you and for sharing I'm and done. for being I'm, together. I'm done. I've gone somewhere else. I'm in the good place now. People Roxy. are always surprised. We're, we're in the room. People are always Post surprised that I got bullied. What do you Wait, mean? What? Because like, uh, because I mean, no one all, would fuck with me now, but like people. But we've all gotten bullied right? here. That's this is why, why we all work together yeah, as that's nerds. Right. Yo, that's right. no yeah, one right? would fuck with you now. <laughs> wait, where are you? <laughs> wait, wait. Shaking Need I up say ahead. more? Need I say more? Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> well, you got your Dr. Clutch. Here. Come on, I got so my Star Trek honestly, jacket. Yeah. On. Heroes of Villains, guys. Herovillains.com. <laughs> Make sure you give 10% using the code Don't LIVE10. Don't step in this tracker. Yeah. Good way to wrap that up. Oh, Boom. Man. Boom. Uh, you guys, I want to go back to Mexico. It was so much fun. I want to go back to Boston. Let's fucking quit, man. Should we just go? <laughs> we should just go to our houses again. Why did we kidding. move here? We have a dream. <laughs> we got a dream, man. Wait, is that your house? You were taking pictures at? No, that's my dad. Yeah. That's my dad's new house. First of all, wow. Yeah. Wow. Can I come of? visit? Because that's yeah. a beautiful. Fun Not house. a bikini pics we got going yeah, on. Yeah. What's going oh, on? Yeah? Are you bothered by the or Did you, you, you like the hot and bothered? What's going on? Oh yeah. Yes. That's what we're all for you. The room has an energy today. It's like fam. What is it? What is it like? Fam. Fam? Is that spelled F A U M? I am Roxy, what the fuck? I don't know what it is. Okay. I always understand you, but today. No, no, no. We're going to bring this up on air. We're going to figure this fucking out right now. Right fucking now. I need this away. What are you doing? I am taking away any stimulus that you have in front of you. What? Let's talk. Oh, shit. Mark turned into Dad Riley. Oh, shit. You made Mark turn into this Dad Riley, Roxy. You... I am a nice guy until a certain point. <laughs> this is year two of the psychotherapy. Yeah, the tough love. Uh, okay. My therapy ain't working. This is what's Wait, happening now. Is this uh, like with, is this withdrawals from Thanksgiving food? Is, 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 is that right? what's happening? I don't know. I can't I'm holding look at all it. your calls, Dr. Riley. <laughs> all your calls are holding a hold. Dr. You know, I don't know what to say. Mark, Roxy? what's really bothering Dorian, you today? Dorian, if you're listening, put out a poll. <laughs> Team Riley or Team Roxy? I have a feeling I'm going to lose that one. <laughs> Did Dorian come into work? Yes. Oh, okay. We just had that sound bite of him. And we What's up, guys? Your boy Dorian? What's up, guys? Your boy Dorian? What's up, guys? Your boy Dorian? Every time we do it, I think it's Dorian. It's so good. Because it sounds like Dorian. Yeah. What's up, guys? How's it going? What's up, guys? Your boy Dorian? <laughs> Dorian's getting yes. that bread what? right now. What? That's his, that's that's his, his thing. That's, that's his pose, pose. When, he, when he takes photos. What are you talking about? What? Yeah. Dorian's post. You haven't seen that? Dorian's a Come squatter? On. Yeah. He loves squatting and taking photos. Oh, yeah. Just go to his Instagram. In fact, Riley and Dorian both modeled I've seen that. Heroes yeah, yeah, yeah. and Villains. You just couldn't get low enough, but I, I get it No, now. I can't. No, I'm you age. have jeans on right now, too. I was, I was going to do 2019, 2019 with him. And I was going to put just that as 2009. Just click on images, Cody. <laughs> and then that is 2019. Epic. What do you guys think it meant when Wendy said she got in a fake bar fight? That's for probably a film or something. Or yeah, or she was a, shooting so, something. So then the answer is no. I was yeah. going to put that as okay. 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever see oh the movie 13? Yes. yes. Is that the one fr- with uh, Evan Rachel Wood? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good movie, no? Yeah. Catherine Hardwick, right? Uh, the director. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, that sounds about right. It also has the other girl in it. Um, Nikki something. Yeah, Nikki Reed. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, after that is when my fighting days started. Because they would like slap each other and get really high, and then we would do that. <laughs> so that's a good should story. We, Let's we move on. Uh, we should we do that Holly now? Holly Hunter was the mom, right? Yeah. 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 All I remember is no bra, no panties, no bra, no panties. You guys remember that? Do it. Yeah. Mm. You guys go now. <laughs> you sit in the room, you play the game. Yes, mm. right. <laughs> that's you know, right. Roxy's you know sitting in the host chair. You know what I discovered last do night? Do it. I went to see Black Don't Christmas. Don't change the subject. What is a D cup? Oh boy! What? Here we yeah. go. Boob? What do you mean? Boobs? What is it? Not boobs. D cups. Like a dick cup? They called it something. 
Mm-hmm. And the girl put it inside her vagina. In, Wait, in whoa, the film. Oh. Wait, whoa, whoa. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's the line? That's the line? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I'm trying to think Wait. about this. Once like, is, like, is it for her are you period? Sure the word was, is it birth maybe. control? Are you sure the word was D cup? Is there another word? D- cup? There's a diva cup, which is a brand. That's what it is. Which maybe. is, by the way, an excellent brand, and it's good for the environment because you end up. I that's what I use now: a menstrual cup Liter- instead of a tampon. Literally, fuck off. Do, yeah, not, do, not, li- do you, not like it? Are you on crack? Can you guys please? Do you okay. not like it? Uh, here's what, here's what, what this, here's what this actually is. Okay. I'm sorry. Did I say something? Okay. Okay. Welcome back to Vagina <laughs> Live. Here we go. Vagina Live. Here's what's up. <laughs> this is what D- Doreen is talking about right now. I want you guys to understand the severity of the situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what most people do to stop their period, sorry if you tuned out, that's your prerogative, but I'm going to keep fucking going, <laughs> is they use... <laughs> They use either a pad, which the blood falls onto, and then you throw it away, or yep, a tampon. Yep. You shove, like, basically it's like a clump of toilet paper up into your vagina. It opens up, and it clots all the blood. Got it. <laughs> what Doreen is doing instead is mm-hmm. putting a fucking cup in there yeah. so that the blood just sits in a cup till you take out the cup from your vagina. Yeah. That shit is fucking wrong. And the toilet looks like the Red Wedding. It's awesome. Cody's <laughs> falling apart. In the it's it's a fucking, I know Cody's falling apart. No, but, but you, but you guys. shove a cup up there. Yeah, well, That's, you shove I've a lot. Seen, other things. It's I've fine. I've out. seen those commercials, man. <laughs> that shit is wrong. It's so good for you, though. What? It's better for your vagina because it doesn't. <laughs> it tamp Cody. Cody, what do you have a daughter one day? You need to learn these things. That's true, Cody. Cody, can Does we clip this out for later, yeah, please? Tell your daughter not to shove a cup in her vagina, or, man. No, you're going <laughs> to be in a better mood because <laughs> the fucking tampons actually take away fluids that your vagina needs, whereas the cup what? doesn't do that. That's true. And that it's also better for it. the environment because I, you're not throwing away a bunch of pads. Yeah, but I, I am not having a cup of blood inside me all day. Should have never it's asked all this day. question. It's just for a little bit. Vampire I shit. I apologize to the <laughs> audience for asking this question. Don't don't uh, knock it till you try it. There we go. I will. I will keep knocking That's my favorite. Team. So we got a poll really? up now. So. <laughs> about, is it about me and you, or is yeah, it about the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the blood? Cups? Well, yeah, I'm sure the I'm sure the cup okay. is coming next. Dorian, yeah. can you make another poll? This show has Tampons gone downhill. <laughs> I quit. I'm not watching team. this show. Why do they oh. keep talking about vaginas? Roxy's winning by 59 percent, 41 percent. No way. But she would kick your ass. No way. No, they're just on Team Roxy. Oh, okay, Team Roxy. Just the fact that Riley today. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I've also never seen you so animated you, the fact against that you a brought fucking it up. menstrual cup. <laughs> 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 this is the most ranty Roxy. Up. She doesn't like cups up her vagina. Here's what happened this morning. I just want to tell you guys. Also, I promise we will get to news today. We got a ton of stuff to talk about. Hey, that well. crisis trailer was crazy. Black Widow was crazy. We got some Star Wars news. But more importantly, I was listening to Eminem this morning oh. on my ride over here. I will say this Eminem very might well be a top two rapper alive Whoa. he is so fucking good i can't help it i love eminem so much uh I, i'm obsessed with him but i haven't listened to him in the morning in a really long time and he's certainly not a happy person no so i came in here hot this today. is what it is and you're like, taking it out you sh- on me you should and, your and freaking the eminem cup. attitude yeah and you're and like you know what cup. Well, because I'm listening, and this morning I'm like, till my bones collapse, till the roof comes out. <laughs> like, driving. What driving song is that? Here. You don't know that? What song is that? Till I collapse. Oh, I've never Was that your, like, old person voice? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What song is that? I Excuse know when mom's Mark. cleaning out her closet. Oh, I know that one. That's know. like the Eddie Murphy uh, <laughs> voice. Uh, Just take the paper. You're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe? Do you? I like him in him. I don't know if he's top two. I, I wouldn't say top two alive no. or but, ever. But he's good. But he's great. alive. Do you think he's great? But mm-hmm. not top two alive. Jay Z's still alive. Kanye's still Kanye's alive. Kanye's my other of the top two, I yeah. think. I think Kanye and Eminem are the two top alive rappers. I'll throw in Big Daddy like Kane can still words. do it. If you go see Big Daddy Kane's little NPR concert, really? his little concert on NPR, it's on YouTube, 25 minutes, raps the fuck out of that. What thing. about Kendrick? Kendrick Lamar? I like Kendrick he's a lot. Amazing. I think I like he's a Kendrick fucking poet. Lot. But he, it, the problem with both Kanye and Eminem is that what I love is 10 years old. Like mm-hmm. and, and Kendrick, I love currently. Right, right. So what about Q-Tip? Mm, uh, Nas, Nas is still alive, dog. Nas is great. Nas is great. I love Lupe. Mm, my brother and I Lupe were talking Fiasco, about this over yeah. over Thanksgiving. Best female rapper ever. Whew. Well, let's think about the ones right now. Like who's actually big right now? Nicki, uh, Cardi. Um, that's like. Top 40, though. Like, who's, like, a... 
Missy. Missy. She's great. It has to be Latifah. She's amazing. Right? For so many reasons. MC Light coming in second, but Latifah's there. What do you think, Cody? <laughs> I'm not qualified for this one. Do you not listen to rap, Cody? No. Never? Not really. I'm more of a uh, Sugar Ray guy. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so happy. I'm not coming into work pissed off listening to this shit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> I think that's the greatest line of all time. I'm not coming to work pissed off listening to that shit. Oh it's too crazy. Damn, Sugar Cody. Ray. I could see Cody at a Sugar Ray concert. Maybe that we awesome. all need yeah. to a listen Blink to this song on the way I'm here. I'm still thinking work. about the blood cup, man. Oh, boy. Oh, Dude, because I can't move on. You, I'm we telling you, you got to try it. <laughs> You'll fucking love we it, man. I'll try it. It's broken. changed my life. <laughs> I can't. What am I gonna put? We in my all ass? try the cup, and then we review it. <laughs> what did you I'm say? Gonna die. I'm gonna die today, and no one cares. What did you say? What did I just? No miss? more M and M for you on the she way goes, into work. Goes, well, Roka should try it. I'm like, what am I gonna put it in my ass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does her ass? Whenever your ass bleeds, it happens. You know? All right, well, okay. Here we are. All right, okay. Cody, well, we're, we're, we, 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 ha- we have to get out of here. We're going to commercial. We will be coming off. back. Aww. We have a lot to talk about, but guys. Guys, don't forget that this commercial, and when I say don't forget, I'm about to tell you something for the first time. So. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a, top, out a, a top 10 Star Wars series that's coming out. And we're about to show you a promo for it, so it's not your regular commercial. It's a dope-ass promo. Thank you to Heroes and Villains for sponsoring the Top 10 Star Wars video. We'll see you guys after this break. All right, we're here today to talk about the top 10 Star Wars films as picked by the fans, which is great because all the pressure is off us. There's a lot of talk about Star Wars right now. Mandalorian's out, there's a new movie coming out, Star Wars Mania. But we want to see where they land. Y'all did it. You all voted, so this is your fault. I don't want to hear one complaint from anybody, especially you. For something as precious as Star Wars to me, I wasn't going to allow a sect of opinion to dictate the list. I wanted to open that up more and let a much wider audience decide on the list. I'll be honest, I'm nervous because I know that this has been voted by the fans, but I love Star Wars, but I'm not a Star Wars nut, so just be gentle. Stay calm, stay calm. I am calm. I'm talking to myself. I love Star Wars because it is about people trying to do good in the face of adversity. It has so much to say about our world while introducing us to new worlds. I like the fact that aliens are representations of minorities in the world. And people are just like, look, this green dude with weird ears, he just kicks it with old boy over here. I responded to Luke Skywalker looking up into the sky and wishing that he had more in his life, that he wanted to venture. The world's crumbling, the world's horrible, the universe has fallen apart. Anyone can be a hero, anyone can rebel, and I also love the idea of rebels as the hero. A lot of times society sees authority one way and rebellion the other, and Star Wars is one of the first things from my childhood where I saw rebels as a positive. It's such a incredibly rich universe and such an easy path to success that it's really become a kind of a quasi-philosophy for the way that I look at life. Do or do not. There is no try. I think most of us can appreciate Star Wars at a young age or as an adult. I think it's a franchise that really transcends generations and backgrounds. It appeals to all of us. The music is one of the best scores ever by John Williams, the master. How can you not love that? Even whatever you think of the new Star Wars movies, that's the best part of Star Wars is John Williams and Yoda. I can't think of my life without Star Wars. Uh, and it still continues to inspire me and teach me and make me think. Plus, laser swords. I know there's gonna be a few uh, curveballs. I imagine it's gotta be Empire Strikes Back at number one. That's pretty much the accepted number one. But I think after number one, who knows? I think that Empire Strikes Back should be number one. And if it's not, that is insane. However, I also understand that I'm older. The new generations might surprise me. That's kind of crazy to think about. I don't know, man. I'm pretty, I, I have no like initial like gauge on what this is gonna be because The Last Shadow was so divisive and some other movies were divisive as well, but I have a good, gauge on what the audience was going to pick because I kind of feel like I relate to them in a way. I'm hoping the fans have voted 
in the same way that I would. Original trilogy at the top, prequels at the bottom, and the other spin-offs somewhere in the middle. Well, I'd assume some of the prequels would be higher on this list than they'd be on mine. And for some reason, generationally, everybody hates Attack of the Clones and a younger generation more than Phantom Menace. And to me, it's, once you demystify midichlorians, it's like you're taking the magic out of this. I think the top spots have to go to the original trilogy. I would be really surprised, actually, if, oh, maybe, I don't know, now I'm going back on what I'm thinking. I have a pretty strong feeling that the original three will probably be in the top five. But what I'm most curious about is where the most recent films come up because I actually like all of them. I like Rogue One, I like The Last Jedi, and I like The Force Awakens. I know, I know. I like this guy. My expectations are all over the place. What I expect from this list is that we celebrate and love Star Wars and have a great conversation. I, uh, I have a lot of faith in the Collider audience. I really, really do, and this is what they love. That said, if the Ewok movies aren't on this list, why are we even here? Welcome back to Collider Live. Wow. We promise not to talk about periods. Not, you guys, the viewership went up when we started getting weird. <laughs> so from now shock. on, uh, we're only talking weird and gross shit. Welcome back to Clyde Alive. <laughs> weird and gross shit. <laughs> Trina, Riley, Roca, Roxy. You should change your name to Cody Rena. Hall. Cody Hall. Alex Marzonia? Yeah, Rena. Not yet. He's here in spirit. Rena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Rena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Make like that a song. Rena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Rena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Rena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Are we doing? Oh, I didn't know we were doing. I didn't know we were doing. Rena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Arena Riley Roca Roxy. Come and on. Cody. Aww. Aww. And Cody too. Oh, we gotta work on that ending, but that and was good. And Cody also. <laughs> 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 Do you guys know how when you watch Family Guy, if they just keep repeating it, it gets funny at some point? Oh yeah. My, at some point. My whole plan in life. <laughs> Ma. Ma. Mama. Mama. Mom, mom, oh my God. mom, mom. Cool whip. How's that working whip. out for you, Roxy? Cool whip. Why are you saying that? Cool whip. It's not working very well, Darina. I'll be honest with you. Well, maybe if you listen to Sugar Ray every morning instead of Eminem. <laughs> Seriously, I think that's uh, stumbled on something very interesting. Oh, I'm in such a better mood now. Listen. Yeah. It is really, yeah. really good. Do you listen to him on the ride home? Mark Meadows, 90s and 9. Do you listen to him on the weekends? Is that what you do, Cody, too? I should. Yeah, you should. What? You know the the lead singer, he hosts 90s on 9 on, on Sirius no, XM. No, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, he does. That's like a second thing he does. Wow. Yep. The more you know. I only listen to Coast 103.5. I listen to that too, Holidays. But... <laughs> Wait. Right before... Okay, just because it's relevant, and then I swear we'll get to news. We're yeah. doing a giveaway for a menstrual cup. We are, and that is the important <laughs> thing. Do you go? But what I was going to say was... Signed by everybody. If you guys are talking about radio, do you guys know what radio, other than when I'm listening to Eminem, I listen to every single morning? Uh, you, if you, you don't 95. know... 95.5. NPR. No. Uh, 102.7, no. KISS FM. No. Cody? Uh, Power 106. No, I listen to K-Love, Christian Rock. Why this, what? why this little Jew girl, I did not know. So I bought my car used, and it was one of the preset stations. And I did not know for two years that I was listening to Christian rock music. What is this station? It's uh, 100.3. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it well, is. Well, it's because it didn't I, used I just, to be it's that. It's on my stations. I think it, that's why. It used to be something else. Yeah. Yo, it's so good. I love <laughs> K-Love. And honestly, they're doing, they're doing a drive right now. They need money. And I am about to spend some money on K-Love. Not kidding, you guys. I love them That's so nice. much. They they have fat. I am an atheist Jew, right. and Caleb has my whole heart. <laughs> so we're, you, you can were love not people of all religions. Wait, you were not funny. listening to it on the way in, though, because otherwise work? I wouldn't Being have been in the crosshairs. Jew? How does that work? I, I atheist Jew. What yo, do you mean? It's so you can have moving. different beliefs. People it's all call people no, no, call like, in. How does that work? How can you? People not call believe in with the be greatest. Jewish. Oh, because you can believe uh, in not believe Jewish in the religion. A, Do you believe in Moses? I'm also Jewish by heritage. Right, right, like, sure, sure, sure. So I'm a Jew. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. and also, actually, I think I'm probably <clears throat> I say atheist, but people get mad because I don't know. I'm probably agnostic because what the fuck do I know? Right. Fair. 
Yeah, and, and I also, I, mean, I don't people, happen to believe, but maybe. Who knows? That's kind of what I say because I used to say atheist, but then athe- I mean, every religion means different things to different people. Just like there's you sure. Know. Uh, but atheist, I feel like it, like some people think it's kind of like agnostic, where you just you don't believe in religion. Right. Mm-hmm. Or like in like the mm-hmm. religion or the deities that were created by humans. Right. Yeah. But you still believe like certain agnostic people and certain atheists also believe that there's like something bigger or like, you yeah. know, or like nature, or the universe or whatever. So but everybody has different beliefs as to even within atheism and within their own religion. True. And then also to answer your question, John, it's also the response to what are you? So mm-hmm. if somebody says, what are you? Probably most people wouldn't say Christian. They would say like. Oh, I'm uh, Italian. I'm blah, blah, blah. Like, if somebody says, what are you? My response is Jewish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I say alien. Yeah. And that's accurate. My <laughs> Correct. And I just don't like pineapple. Correct. <laughs> I just don't like pineapple on my pizza. That's what I was well, like. Honestly, I don't like cheese on my pizza, so Whoa. it gets weirder and weirder. Riley, mm-hmm. we got a ton of news today. What do you got for us? <laughs> There it is. Can you use the D cup to put the sauce on the pizza? Rena, okay. Riley, Riley. You can use the D cup. Star you Wars, everybody. Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> you want to go Star Wars? We let's go. Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah, we do have Star Wars. Star news. Wars. It's actually pretty cool too. Yeah, let's talk about this. Then we were uh, having an interview with J.J. Abrams oh, over right. uh, and on Nerdist. They're covering this. This was an uh, Esquire article mm. where he went. In, everybody's talking about Ray, right? What's Ray's origin and her parents? But he said Ray, sh- Ray, Ray. He's Everyone's shining a light. talking about Ray. He's actually shining a light Sugar as red. well on finding out the origin <laughs> right. and more about Finn and his backstory. Now, we know he was a, you know, FN2187. Yeah. Is that what it is? Uh, Traitor! Traitor. You're the so, one in the Star Wars jacket. Yeah, well, there it is. Nerd. So we are going to be getting a little bit more information and a little bit more of his origin on how he became a stormtrooper. And then there's more after that. So that's what JJ that's is cool. hinting at. So I we're wish... going to focus a little bit more on Finn. I think we're going to learn something about Finn that's going to be regarding the force. That's Darina, Snoke. You're saying that's cool, but your face is saying otherwise. Yeah. Well, no, I just because I had conflicting feelings in my mm-hmm. head and my face just shows that Talk sometimes. Talk about loud. Uh, no, so that's what I wish uh, Half of the Last Jedi was. I wish instead of going to Canto Bight, they actually had focused on more of Finn leaving the Empire mm. and and struggling with that, and then also maybe get a little backstory. Mm-hmm. What's um, the conflicting feeling then? What what don't well you like because about I this? because I thought I was like oh yeah I want to get to know could get to know Finn more and these new characters, and then in my head I was just like oh, I didn't do that in Last Jedi, and I was just being a nerd. Oh yeah, you know, Finn, I was just being a loser. You know, Finn so. kind of got lost in the, in the plot <laughs> of uh, Last Jedi, and I think he's in in JJ said this, and sorry, it's Vanity Fair that the article is in if you want to find it there. He says, we're going to learn a lot more about Finn's backstory that was part of the setup in Episode 7. It was alluded to in Episode 7, sorry, but there's a bit more light to shed on this character. So I find out, I I think we're going to get some big reveal with him. You got to think with Return of the Jedi, I'm going to get Star Wars sweaty with you guys. Doreen, I want you in on this. Come on. Okay. Star Wars sweaty. Okay. When you think about Return already. of the Jedi, when you, yep, exactly, waving to, aww. Aww. That just really made my day. That was really sweet. We got sweaty. Yeah, Yeah. we got sweaty for Schnepp. So when you think about Return of the Jedi, and there is another when uh, Yoda kind of said that in Empire Strikes Back, that other was revealed to be Leia. So I think we're going to get kind of an echo, and that Rey has always been the the main Jedi in this. And I think we're going to get a reveal of another and I think Finn might be one of those characters. You really do? Wow. Yeah, I do you f- think Finn is strong with the Force? I do because if he goes to alluding to Episode 7, the very first trailer ever we saw for the new Disney Star Wars, there was a voice that said, there has been an awakening, have you felt it, and Finn pops up. I think that was done on purpose. And I'd like to believe it was the long play Thank that you. we were going to get to Finn being Force-sensitive. Um, I don't. I might agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know if that was the long play, considering everything they, that's happened. I totally agree. You know what? I hear it. I understand it. Me trying to be a positive Star Wars guy, I'd like to believe that that was JJ's intention. Initially, but then you know he handed it, it off to Ryan Johnson and and Ryan Johnson and did an amazing job. And Ryan Johnson did an amazing job, and then JJ came back and he can pick up some loose threads. John Rocco, what are you thinking? Um, <clears throat> I think it's a long play. I, I don't know if that's going to work for the fans. I think fans are pretty much yeah. resigned to just getting something about Finn and then being okay with it. Yeah. I think what they really want to focus on is Ray and Kylo. And it would be nice to get a backstory because, I mean, we can find out, obviously, where the Empire or the uh, First Order has been selecting these people mm-hmm. as uh, kids to train essentially like a guerrilla army to yep. become 
these just mindless warriors. And so, like, where are they getting them from? Blah, blah, blah. I think we'll get an explanation of that. Finn coming home. It'll kind of balance out what we saw in, Cl- in um, Rebels with, uh, what's the main kid in Rebels again? Ezra. Ezra. With Ezra, like, trying to find his parents Miller. the whole time, right? Yeah, Ezra, right. Ezra Miller, yeah. <laughs> trying to find his parents the I whole time. Rebels. We could have Finn going back to his home planet and kind of closing the loop on that and discovering his family. I think that would be That's cool. it. You touched on it, though. Yeah. Why, mm-hmm. did, why was he the only stormtrooper in the First Order to mm-hmm. turn away mm-hmm. and to, to go against his counter-programming? That's sure. why I feel that there's some force what are other, element could be, there. What are other answers to that question? I don't know. What do you mean? Like, well, you said why? But see, I, that, what, that's what I hope. Uh, that's what I hope Just we because? get a little bit more of the army, like to, to touch on what you said, yeah. Roka. Get a little bit more on why and how they're picked. What's the conditioning? What is it they're brainwashed and all these different things to become a first order stormtrooper? Uh, but let me ask you this: What do you guys like out of all the new? movies like the new trilogy like what's the character that you're like this is my character this is the one i like i i'm obsessed with this kylo is the ren. one i want to i, I want to focus on kylo kylo ray how come why do i like kylo best or, or what are you what makes them so interesting that you'd rather this movie focus on them i think a lot of it has to do with performance okay yeah, yeah. i mean he's a great actor yeah he yeah. is he really is and the circumstances around his character i i love that he is being tortured by the light and yet he keeps choosing the darkness mm-hmm. i find that fascinating because of where he comes from and from where he comes what from if and, and walking on that uh, balancing act with where you're gonna go and right. i hope they go there because rise of skywalker everybody has been talking about ray and could it be connected to ray somehow is she going to be a skywalker to reveal i don't think so and I like to believe that this Skywalker saga is all about Kylo because he's a Skywalker. Who's yours? Well, because that's what I was trying to think about because, like, the first time, and I want to hear uh, Roka's uh, take oh. on Ray, but uh, when I first saw the movie, I was obsessed with Ray. Just be, I mean, that mm. scene where she grabs the lightsaber, spoilers, from uh, from <laughs> Kylo, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, that, that's the first scene in the movie that I was like, I felt like a kid again, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, and it's, it's just also was excellent in that movie as an actress. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do, I, it's interesting you brought out the Finn thing uh, news-wise today because I feel like I did, I really wanted to see that, you know, bad guy, Stormtrooper, not really be bad and come to help the Rebels. Like, we haven't really seen that in any Star Wars movie and I feel like that should have been developed more. And maybe J.J. had that plan, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. But um, but Dre was definitely somebody that I was like, oh, shit, she's fucking awesome. I, I just like it because I'm a TV fan, and I when they you're writing a pilot, they say that your pilot should be really episode three of the series, mm-hmm. right? And it's why in television we get so many flashbacks and why you you jump in with these characters and then you learn more about them as we go. So I like the fact that they're like, we haven't forgotten about you. Mm-hmm. We are going to explain a little bit more why why he is the way he is, where that comes from. And I, I just think it's smart storytelling. Right. As long as his background is cool. Right. If, if it's boring, if it's something like going to a planet where we spend half an hour on and he's gambling and it sucks dick, then it right. sucks. But, like, if it's cool, then I'm excited to watch it. Right. John, why why Ray for you, did you say? Just because you're a bad guy does not mean you are a bad guy. Mm. Um, for me, Ray is... Okay. Keep with the accent, please. I'll get you please. next time, Gadget. <laughs> gadget. Uh, for me, it's more about that I like the fact that we have a character like Ray who doesn't fit all the norms that we've seen before in Star Wars. The beats are not necessarily the same. She's way more Force-sensitive than Luke was. She's way more aware of the situation mm-hmm. than Anakin was. She doesn't stumble into the... Like, for her, she, it's instinct. Everything mm-hmm. has been instinct to get her out of the situation, get her into a situation, figure things out as it goes along. I mean, she's going toe-to-toe with Luke in Jedi, being like, you get your ass back in the battle. Mm-hmm. Stop being over out here as an old man whining and complaining. Come fight. Are you not going to fight? Fuck you. I'm going to go fight. Mm. You know? I like that she's constantly I driving towards you. Her. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> she's, constantly, she's constantly driving towards what she thinks is the right thing to do. So, and I know some people will be upset about, oh, she she, maybe, she used the force so quickly, but I don't care. What I care is that she's, <laughs> she's a character that's pushing through, like people in life, pushing through to accomplish something, and no one's going to keep her from that goal. And she's learning as she goes along, and she's acquiring information so quickly and so intelligently, and she's processing it and then applying it to the next challenge in front of her or, or obstacle in front of her, and she's going forward. And if she, if she wasn't pushing forward momentum, everyone else would be sitting around going, what do we do? Why are we not doing right. this? Why, blah, blah, blah. She's the one pushing everything forward. Right. Uh, not Poe, not Kylo, not certainly not Finn. 
And mm. so that's why I like Ray so much. Well, and also it's interesting that people <coughs> complain about like, oh, why is she so force sensitive right away? I'm like, well, then what about Anakin? Yeah. I mean, he is a he was a child, and he got he literally people thought he was a chosen one. Hashtag right. so bring right. back Hayden. Yeah. Well, JJ even said that he's. I, g- I think there's going to be an answer Same. with why Ray mm-hmm. is as good as she is. Um, I think he's going to go there, and I think it's going to be tied to Finn. And I think a oh, lot maybe. of these things we've talked about on Rule of Two all the time, me and Fernandez, mm-hmm. is that there is a lot to kind of wrap up in, in Rise of Skywalker. Hopefully they can do it, and it's satisfying for everybody because there are a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's hard to judge the trilogy. I, I'm sure we'd be – put ourselves after Empire Strikes Back, how many questions there were right. leading into Return of the Jedi, and then how many answers we did get in Return of the Jedi. Hopefully we have the same kind of closure with Rise of Skywalker. I mm-hmm. agree. Mark the Yodius Riley, mm-hmm. though. I think it's time to move on to trailers. Let's do it. Trailers. But before yeah. that, I really hope that we get another Yub Nub. Just well, saying. you know we're getting Ewoks, right? Well, we better get another Yub Nub. But do you know it was confirmed well, yes, that but we're I getting know, Ewoks? But we haven't confirmed the Yub Nub part. Well, I think so it's, it's, it's kind <laughs> of... Do it for I need the Yub Nub. Okay. Well, hey, uh, I will Yub Nub all up and down the place Thank for you. you. So there it is. Black Widow trailer oh. was revealed today. Did you guys see the first trailer ever for Black Widow that's coming out in May of 2020 this year? Roxy. I did. I did see it. And I have to be honest with you guys. I don't have very strong thoughts on it. I thought that I'm it, with you. I thought that the trailer really? I'm was, with you. Yeah. It was a trailer. <laughs> uh, Black Widow has not been my favorite character, mm-hmm. being completely upfront. Yep. Uh, I So I watched this trailer and it looked like totally fine. Mm-hmm. Totally fine. Nothing about it peeved me. Nothing about it was upsetting. It was cool. There were some cool action sequences. Uh, I like Florence Pugh a lot. Yeah. So, cool. I'm in. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I, I, I'm kind of with Roxy, too, but uh, I love Black Widow in Winter Soldier, but I feel like her character just was not developed well in any of the other movies. Mm. Um, so if we get that Black Widow, if we if we, if we get to see, because Scarlett Johansson, whatever you think of her, he, she's a great actor. I she think was she's fucking, a phenomenal Fucking actress. amazing in Jojo, Jojo Rabbit. Rabbit holy like she, crap. Marriage Story. Oh, so good. And so... Um, she's incredible. Yeah, so I, if, if they focus on that, if they bring that... Natasha does, and I'm I'm down. Especially, I will watch anything with Florence, Florence Pugh. I'm obsessed with that woman. Yep. She's fucking awesome. She's made all my all my favorite movies this year: Midsummer, Little Women. She's fantastic. So yep. I will watch anything with her. Did you feel like this trailer though was giving you the Natasha vibes that you wanted, or you couldn't tell from this trailer? Um, I I feel like you, specifically because of the rest of the cast. Um, I don't think like Rachel Weisz, David Harbour. Like I'm hoping that that it's more of a character story because of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And and you see it like the fact that you have the family sitting down mm-hmm. and, and the, the dad like wearing that suit and it doesn't fit. Like hopefully we'll get a little bit of like fewer Marvel MCU p- puns and more character story. That's what I'm hoping for. OK. Yeah. Roka? I loved it. I thought it was great. Well, it's a teaser trailer. So you're not going to get much of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, they gave you the vibe of what this film is going to be about. So it's got that Jason Bourne ish vibe to it. Wait, how long? Was it? Two minutes. And, and it's not an official trailer? It's not official. It's a teaser trailer. It's a trailer. teaser trailer. Yeah. Official, official teaser, they're calling yeah. it. Why? What? I don't understand anymore what the difference between a teaser and a trailer is. I, when it's a freaking tra- trailer to me. Well, yeah. There's a teaser of a teaser of a teaser. Mm. So. That's. I think it's whatever they decide to do it in the studio. They're allowed to call it whatever they want. We can We can, totally. We can feel. We can, we can call it differently if we want. It certainly felt like a trailer to me. Like you said, two minutes. That's a standard thing for a trailer. But... I enjoyed that you got a, a little more with Natasha, and I don't disagree with you. I, I think she's not a lot of people's favorite characters because they have done a good job building her backstory mm-hmm. up in all those movies. Yeah. yeah, Winter Soldiers, where she really gets a chance to like spread her wings, Scarlet right. does. And so that fact that she's getting to do this in this movie is great. We get a little that little MCU humor when they're all sitting around the table mm-hmm. and you go, still feats, you know, yeah. all of that. You got fit. Uh, that's funny stuff. Um, David Harbour's, you bring in the, a guy like that because you know that's perfect for Red Guardian. Rachel Weisz's character is supposed to turn into a villain down the road. I don't mm-hmm. know if she will in this movie. Mm-hmm. The main villain is Taskmaster, who we saw popping out of mm-hmm. that tank. So all of that's there. I like the opening, like, boom, 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 synthesizer Music's score. The, the that in, was cool. The Inception horn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I enjoy. So it's got a little bit of Winter Soldier vibes to it. So maybe Sebastian Stan shows up. Um, so there's Do you a think lot. if he does show up, we will see that in a teaser or trailer prior to the Not, movie? No. I don't think so. I think that would be a big mistake. Because there'll probably be like a cameo. Yeah, something small. Because, I mean, she showed up in Captain America movies, so why wouldn't he kind of show up as a Winter Soldier connected to Captain America? But overall, I thought it was a nice vibe, and I think uh, I love seeing her in the white suit. That was Mm -hmm. badass, Uh, which I haven't seen in, uh, you know, that's from the comics in the early 2000s, so that's fun to see. So there's a lot of it that has this 
um, fighting vibe, Jason Bourne vibe, but also the MCU humor. So I think it's the right kind of film to give her to try to build her character up. And hopefully you walk away with it feeling like she's a better character and a more fleshed out character. Hmm. Right. Yeah, similar. Like, yes, Obi-Wan died, but we're still getting his movies, right? Like, so right. why right. not? If you have a good character that you can flesh out, properly do it. Yeah. Especially with Florence Pugh in the movie. Yes, that's, that's the trick, right? Is tr making us care for s the stakes, knowing the outcome of this character, exactly. especially Black Widow. We know what happens to her in Endgame. Right. So that's what I think lands with me is that you're coming off the high of Endgame mm -hmm. with like the culmination of all this stuff. I mean, you're so emotional. We know what happens with with Black Widow. For this, you know, it's like it looked across the board looks great for me. My the stakes. I'm like, well, I know what happens, so I I can't really get so excited for it because I know the the eventual outcome. Now it's up to the the filmmakers and the movie itself to just make me care. Yeah. And I and I think it's all there. It looks great. I'm gonna see this movie, but for the trailer, for the very first reaction, I'm like, cool. I know yeah. that it's hard to say without seeing, but do you wish that this movie came out before Endgame? Hell yes. 100%. It would have worked a lot better for me. I don't know. I mean, because it's set after Civil War. We don't know. I mean, it's yeah. set under wraps still. I don't but... necessarily mean right before Endgame. I mm. mean e chronologically or Maybe after well, Civil War. The right. interesting thing about Endgame and all of these, not just the movies, mm. but the TV shows we're getting, right? Like Loki and Wanda. Like it's it's. That's an interesting question because I think about, like, are there any of those characters that I want to really, like, dying to see their story still yeah. after we've already seen Endgame? And right. I can't really think of one. I'm trying to think of, well, like, think of Doctor Strange, but we're getting another movie. For we are. Yeah. And I think that's why the Black Widow thing works because she's been the one that's been kind of shortchanged in the right. whole situation. So she gets a thing. You said it after Infinity War. Thunderbolt Ross is a part of this thing. So how much of the Hulk is involved in this? Because remember, they're still they're still having some kind of situation, situation after yeah. Civil War. And I think it works putting it before Infinity War and Endgame because in the comics, her sister, Florence Pugh, takes over Black Widow. Yelena. So it makes yeah, Lena Belova. So it makes sense for her to sacrifice herself in Endgame because that allows that doesn't mean that will be no Black Widow. His, her sister's taken over that spot, right. so she can sacrifice herself more willingly mm -hmm. in the situation. So you think this movie can maybe <laughs> fill in that kind of choice and make it a little bit more poignant yes. when we when we revisit Endgame? Yes, I like I, that. And I'll throw yeah. something else in there. If we're not belaboring the point, um, there was a, a deleted scene released a couple of days ago from Infinity War, <laughs> where Doctor Strange was in the astral plane mm -hmm. talking to Spider Man to convince Mantis to bring back to life. Drax and Star-Lord and Nebula who had kind of been killed by Thanos and she brings them back to life with her antlers which are connected or whatever they are antenna. antennas yeah they're antennae connected to the soul stone mm. so is there a possibility down the road releasing this right before Black Widow that she goes and brings Black Widow out of the soul stone in the sequel it's Florence Pugh and Scarlett Johansson coming back together again after so, she supposedly dies. So Black I think Widow that back to life. Somebody in back the comments is Widows. correcting John. Uh -oh. Hulk is not on Earth. He's still on Sikar. After in, after Civil War. Yeah. Know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I. But she's still hear what you're saying, it. John, and I like that. However, I think that it, what's so hard is the longevity of these movies. Does it diminish the value of Endgame to bring back ScarJo after Endgame? Right. Well, it makes her sympathetic character because she died. So people are like wanting to see that. Yeah, but does it does it make the movie less impactful? Well, that was my point about Obi Wan, mm, right? So. That we're still getting movies where we already know what's going to happen. Yeah. No, I'm so saying I'm legitimately bringing her back. Oh, right. oh, you mean if they oh, brought her back? Yeah. Well, they brought back everyone else. Well, that's a that's a problem with and comic the, books, right? <laughs> but they, Everybody I mean, not from back. dying, dying. Well, Gamora, they kind of undid the cheated snap, bringing back Gamora. They, they did cheat right. that. Yeah, yeah. So. Cody, did you watch this trailer? Yeah, I'm with you. Though. I don't really have much of an emotional reaction. It looks cool. I'll see it, but mm. no real hot takes for me today. Has Alex graced us with his presence yet? Alex, what do you? No, he's not. He's not here. <laughs> Alex oh. is not here right now. He's like, I'm not coming. I'm <laughs> listening to Sugar Ray instead. <laughs> Hell yeah, he is. Yeah, or maybe he's writing our theme song. That's true. What's up with that? What That's happened true. there? What did ha I just wrote it for him? Rena Riley Roca Roxy and Cody and we need Alex Lenny shows up, which is not very often. Wear a menstrual cup. <laughs> back already back and there. We're, huh? And we're back. <laughs> we did it. Roca's like, why did I sign up for this shit? Oh, no, no, I'm having a good time. It's a fun morning. I'm having a good time too. And what I also was having a good time with was the Crisis on Infinite Earths trailer. Yeah, that's You're a segue, like a, isn't it? That is a segue. You are, 
You're a quickly. big fan of those TV shows, right? So here's the deal. <laughs> yeah, I guess. here I love DC, and I watch every DC CW TV show, including the, the off, like, iZombies and right. Legends of Tomorrow of the World, but Supergirl, Black Lightning, Arrow, Flash, all of them I watch. I, I love... I loved them all at one time. Uh, they've definitely peaked and valleyed. Some of them suck at times, and, but I've hung in. And I feel like crisis. I feel like I have been waiting for this for eight years. Okay. So I'm so, so invested. I was going to say I feel like I've earned this and deserved it as a fan, but then it started having reminiscence of Christian Harloff uh, circa uh, Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy Gate. So I, yeah, so I changed my verbiage, but then I let you guys know what I was thinking anyway because no fucking filter. Yep. Anyway, so I feel Start like a petition. This, this is for the people like me who have spent eight years watching fucking eight TV shows right, right. and like like, are ready for this. You're like, I have done my time. Done, yeah, <laughs> totally. And talk about it every single week on DC Movie News and have covered multiple of the shows on all different outlets, including After Buzz, Only Stupid Answers, Source Fed, you know, uh, Screen Junkies, Nerdist. Like, I've talked about these shows for years. So I am fucking ready for this. <laughs> I am ready for Crisis. That being said, I think it's also for... People like Riley, who yep. love Superman right. in general, like Smallville, and want to see this. Mm -hmm. Or you guys, just nerdy as hell. Right. Like, it, it's all, I think they're doing a great job finding something for everyone right now. And this trailer really did that. Really did that for me. Well, like, yeah. I, I tried to put my head in all different <coughs> positions, and I was like, I think anybody can find something they like in this. Yeah, because even if I'm not into these shows as much i'm more of a casual fan because my husband watches all of them right like he's obsessed with them he loved flash forever uh but just seeing the trailer i'm like oh yeah even if i don't catch up i can just watch that episode and, mm -hmm. and i can just watch the series and be happy well so. they're definitely not it's not like a rocket science where if you yeah if you watch this and you'll be like what the hell is happening here it, it, it's superhero stuff so and i think supermen and all the people all the all the people yeah yeah, that, yeah. that's what i want to see i just want to see how they're going to meet up with Smallville's Clark Kent and, and you know, the other Superman and how does Brandon Routh's Superman come in? So you are going to watch. Oh, I'm definitely going to watch because you of, are too. to your point, Roxy, it's yeah. the fact that there's something for everybody. I'm a Superman guy, so I can look at this on the outside having, I have not seen one episode of any of these Arrow, Flash, Black Lightning, any of these, but I watched a couple seasons of Smallville, so, but for this, it's just like, let me just watch and have fun. And mm -hmm. see if I can keep up with with all of it. I just want to see some cool Superman action and see how they do the story for uh, for a, a well known comic run. I think it's great if you're a nerd about the comic book, the original comic book, Crisis of Infinite Earths, and other stuff. I mean, having the monitor on there is like, I never thought I'd see that yeah, on it's screen. Wild. It's kind of mind blowing. Um, and having all all the play out, bringing back Tom Welling, Kevin Conroy playing the Batman, which is essentially the as cool. the the Azrael Batman when when Batman has his, his back broken by Bane. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, this is an interesting version of Batman you want to bring into the situation. Is that for real? I think so. Yeah. I mean, him coming down in the thing is With how yeah, Batman yeah. was. Kevin cool. Conroy. What? <coughs> what? What do you mean, Kevin Conroy? Kevin, Kevin Conroy. He's actually going to be. Did in you see him in the, the trailer? In the trailer? No, I didn't. Yeah, I With missed the him. Wait, but this is, that was him when he's walking down the steps. Holy shit! This is that's what I'm saying. Something for everybody. But this yeah. is what I'm confused about, John. As a fan of the of uh, yeah. the CW shows, I don't understand. So we know that Kate Kane. I'm just gonna spoilers for Batwoman. Okay, yeah. uh, if you're watching the show, what you know is that when she was a kid, she was in a car accident, and uh, that's when her and there's a situation with her mom and her sister but batman came and saved her out yeah. of the car yeah. mm -hmm. batman being her cousin right. so he has to be old enough older than her enough that at least he was batman by right. that right. point right. but kate kane is ruby rose mm -hmm. ruby rose is i don't know 30 something yeah, sure kevin conroy is 60 something 60 mm -hmm. something when yeah. when kevin conroy walks in and she says bruce so you're telling me that kevin conroy is this batwoman's Cousin? Multiverse. Could be. I guess so. No, but not multiverse, because oh. that's our, our Kate. I mean, oh. I, 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 or so maybe multiverse. But the way she says Bruce is shock. 
So So you think he had just introduced himself and said, I'm Bruce, and she said, Bruce? Or you think that no. she... I think he's a Bruce from another ultimate, right. uh, an alternate timeline, and she sees him walking with all the stuff on, and she's like shocked to see him look that way. But you think that's what her, that's the age difference of her Bruce? Could be. I, yeah, I, no, I, don't I think know. the timeline I mean, sounds ba- more like it. Because if Batman's in his 30s when he saves her, how old is she? Well, I the- don't know if he's in his 30s, but okay. I guess if he's Batman, then maybe. He's kind of ageless. Plus, it's how, how old was she when she was rescued? Did you say <coughs> a kid? She was a, a kid? kid, so let's seven say seven or something. Yeah, but the guy Luke Fox, uh, Luke Fox is Batman's Lucius Fox. No, Lucius Luke Fox. Fox. But he's Luke called Fox. Luke Fox. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, it's Lucius Fox's son. son yeah. Ah, um, okay. Luke Fox is like left behind in the, in the Batcave, basically, right. and he is Ruby Rose's age. But he worked for Kevin Conroy. I just I I'm. So excited for this in every aspect. However, I hope it makes sense. Yeah. Because we've got a lot of fan service going on, and I use that as a pretty word, not an ugly word. Fan service can be really great. Right. But the fact that we are throwing in everything from like images of Nick Cage yeah. to uh, Kevin Conroy right, right, right. to Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Michael, yeah. Like there have been so many rumors too. I don't know how many of them are true, how many of them are not true. That Brandon Routh is going to be both the Adam and, and Superman. Superman. Yep, yep. That we've got three Supermans. Tyler Hecklin's also coming in. Tom Welling. Like there's just so much stuff going on right. that I'm like, please, dear God, make this make sense because you can't risk the storyline for the sake of bringing back actors. Mm. But we have five episodes mm. to do it. And what's really cool about that <laughs> is that three of those episodes take place. In December, yeah, and then two of them wait an entire month. So that means that we can have a really cool cliffhanging kind oh, of yeah, thing. Oh yeah, for sure. Which I'm all about. And really quick from the comments, a lot of people are saying that uh, my cousins are my parents' age and blah blah blah. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, I guess There's so. That. I just when every time she's talked about Bruce, I've pictured somebody yeah. like ten years older than right. her, just because she said they were close growing right. up. Like, but I guess it but could be. But it's not the Earth Batman technically. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just I just and hope Batman's it's like gone for a little bit, but he's still like Batman. Mm-hmm. I just hope it's like Days of Future Past, where whatever they do, well, that they just did that, but I liked it. So mm-hmm. whatever, I had fun during the movie, you know. Yeah, Something. and by the end it. of it, I'm hoping that boom, one one Earth, so now we can have more crossovers. Yes, like everybody's Earth 38. Yeah, yeah Earth 38, exactly, which was cool to see Rusty. that in the in the teaser or what's, the trailer as well. What's your favorite? What do you think it's the best show out of all of them? It's so hard to answer because ask me per week. Like okay. they're the most consistent from start to finish has been Arrow. Yeah. Although there was two years where Arrow sucked. That's mm-hmm. when I stopped watching. Right. Uh, I couldn't. It, yeah. It, the love triangle was fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, and it so definitely was never my favorite. I always loved favorite. Supergirl and Flash, but Legends of Tomorrow has been my favorite for a That's while. That's my okay. favorite. And then Titans is uh, popping in oh. to this crossover is as Doom well. Is coming into this I one? haven't heard that. Okay. I've only heard That'd Titans. Crazy. But, yeah. the, but Titans was awesome this season. Yeah. Season one I didn't love. Season two was amazing. So I don't know. I, I go... I go back and forth, and then I guess my favorite DC show that's currently on the air is Watchmen, which is the well, one show yeah. that won't be but that's appearing in this. Although that would be wild if it did. That'd be great. Alan Moore would shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Dr. Manhattan she would, is, is that no! Rorschach? Alan Moore would shit a blue dildo. That's what would happen if that happened. <laughs> That, oh my god. That's a more visual image than the, the blood cup. Then well, we're hitting it all today. <laughs> yeah, we definitely are. Riley, what other news you got for us today? Can I please go over this one news with you that I'm is absolutely yeah, you should be. What because is it? everybody should be worried Uh-oh. about this. What's going on, Mark? Johnny Depp. Oh. <laughs> is yeah. going to be mounting a production. This is an this is a Dorina I, opening not, night production. I've not heard of this. What? <laughs> oh, you're gonna hear about What's it now. Happening? <laughs> So, already bought tickets for this. Yeah, he's <laughs> mounting an unauthorized biography of Michael Jackson on stage, told from the point of view of the glove. Wait, wait start start again. So, <laughs> start again. Yes. Well, I'm reading. I'm not, yes. Uh, but I'm not kidding. Say it again. <laughs> Johnny Depp will produce a musical <laughs> about Michael Jackson's rhinestone glove. Yep. Okay, so there's an indie theater circuit. <laughs> will soon mount an unauthorized musical. This is from Forbes. Musical on stage? Mus- musical on stage mm-hmm. for the life of Michael Jackson from the perspective of his most recognizable fashion accessory, the glove. And it's, go- it's going to be called For the Love of a Glove, an unauthorized musical fable about the life of Ma- Michael Jackson as told by his glove. That's the title. 
So uh, I know from writing a lot of biopics, said uh, this is the. Wait, are you, are you guys fucking with me? No, no. This is a real no it's a real thing. No, it's fucking. I, I it's feel in like the news. you guys set me up. No, no, no. 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 It's covered in everything. No. Nope. Yeah. Oh. This is literally news. Keep going. Yeah, so, thank you, yeah. Cody. Look this up. I Johnny, still don't it's in the it's in the rundown. It's in the rundown. Uh, if you if you want to click the link under the uh, un, under the rundown here, we have it. Shout what, out to, that link, shout out to Tabitha for saying poor glove. Poor glove. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Riley, keep going. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to find the line that got me. Um, Stay at the courtyard. Hold on, real quick. Uh, keep it? talking amongst yourselves while I find this because I have to read to you one of the things, and I have to read it. Because it's absolutely batshit <laughs> crazy. For the love of a glove. Have, is John, so okay. the creator of this is said, I said, how's <clears throat> this? Everything MJ has been accused of has actually been caused by his glove, which is actually an alien from outer space <laughs> and feeds on virgin boy blood. Wait, who's saying this? Who's saying this? They laughed and said, can you wait, do wait, the Wait, wait, who said version? that? Who yeah. just said, who said that? Johnny Depp said that? Nitzberg. Who, uh, <laughs> wait, Nitzberg, wait, wait, what, Riley? Do, tell me, say what you're saying again. This is probably oh, the worst article I cannot find. <laughs> Wait, Julian is... Nitzberg is a writer director who is going to be doing For the Love of a of a Glove. And when he was pitching this, he said this to page six. I'm known for writing a lot of biopics. A major TV network wanted me to write a Jackson movie. But the question came up about how to deal with the child abuse allegations. So he said, how's this? Everything MJ has been <clears throat> accused of has actually been caused by his glove, was it, which is actually an alien from outer space, and feeds on virgin boy blood. They oh, laughed and said, can you do the normal version? Which he basically said, no, I can't. So with his, his revised premise, nixing those development plans, Nitz, Nitzberg stuck with God, that framework and began formatting it for stage. For the love of the glove, will reportedly look into the strange forces that shaped Michael and the scandals that bedeviled his reputation with the enigmatic and nefarious glove acting as a singing narrator. Holy shit. Mm. I did. And that's it for Collider Life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah, watch it if like, Florence I, Pugh is so, a glove. So here's the thing. When I was putting the show, when ah. I was adding some things to the show this morning, I read this and I went, we got to talk about this because oh, Johnny shit. Depp wants to produce this freaking musical and this thing wants to come out and do this take on everything. Okay. I guess it's my job to actually comment on this. So <laughs> it, it, it's batshit. Here we go. It's I mean, I think, you're, I think your face during the your whole... Your face is going to... It, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe I'm reading that it. That was our reaction too when we read it. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. multiple things here. Yeah. I definitely want to watch this because no. it's a, such a shit show. Number one... It would kind of be like if Jojo Rabbit came out in 1946, and right. Jesus. Yes. and and also um, it was coming out by somebody who was accused of <coughs> um, <coughs> domestic violence, right. uh, and also um, that it wasn't interesting or good and they were also blaming the um holocaust on uh hitler's mustache which came from outer space because it so was CG. that would be like the equivalent of how i feel right now just to be clear i mean however though remember the holocaust did happen and the michael jackson thing is like not specifically proven oh, right but, but, I, but i see what you're saying 100 percent, 100 percent, and i'm not calling him the holocaust right, right, of no, whatever but like that's that's how i feel about making this movie right. where it's like Holy shit, are you in touchy territory right. that is so recent? And also, you're gonna address the issues. You're gonna say that they happened. You're gonna say that he was a child molester, but you're gonna blame it on the glove. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit more backstory oh on you got uh, on this creator. Nitz, one of Nitzberg's most recent stage pr productions, The Beastly Bombing or a Terrible Tale of Terrorists Tamed by the Tangles of Love. That is the title. Was awarded Give best, it to me again. The Beastly Bombing or a Terrible Tale of Terrorists Tamed by the Tangles of Love. That's one title. That is one title. Mm -hmm. And it was awarded Best Musical of the Year by Ellie Weekly in 2006. That was a production he mounted that many wow. years ago. While the play was a cult success in Southern California, its satirically flippant depiction of Al-Qaeda and homegrown American terrorists prompted Wicked and Godspell composer Stephen Schwartz to declare it the most offensive and morally unredeemable musical I've ever heard. Hmm. I so, do like Stephen Schwartz. Yeah, so yeah, one of the one of the creators of Wicked called it the most 
and he also, unredeemable musical I've ever heard. So well, maybe you Johnny can kind Depp, of understand the divisiveness he's going for when he's going to mount this. And maybe Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp wants to make the most like unredeemable musical. Uh, maybe he wants to beat the other up. musical. The I fact guess, that Johnny Depp wants to do this. <laughs> I guess anybody's allowed to shoot their shot, man. So like mm. uh, he, Johnny Depp has put himself in a position where he has enough money to produce this, so he's allowed to do that uh, because that's how the world works. I don't know why on earth, especially being in the hot water that he's in right now, <coughs> this would be his career move. Right. But if he one hundred percent, I have no idea. To, then, then he wants to, and whoever wants to see it should. Right. I mean, it also. I guess. De- I mean, I, I, but it also depends on what type of music it is. Like, is it going to be just like satire it's with a be, really yeah, touchy right? subject? Because. I mean, if you have great writers, some people will think it's horrible and offensive, and some people will think it's good and funny. John, well, that's the way of the world. John, weigh in. I don't know what you want me to say. This is <laughs> it's like this is a very interesting situation on so many levels because a, you make a great point, Roxy. Like this guy is still in knee deep in the Amber Heard stuff, and mm. people are taking sides on that one way or another. Currently in court. Yeah, currently in court, and there have been some videos and on both sides. So both, like, hundred percent both sides. I can't fall on either side on that situation. I just like I'm like that's just a terrible relationship. Yeah. And we've all been in them, mm-hmm. and if someone put a window on us. Or a camera on us in bad relationships, we probably weren't acting our best. So, I don't know if I ever tried I don't to chop them. off somebody's finger. But or, or the rumor of poop in someone's bed. I would never have done that either, which what is the if, rumor that she might have done that what to What if John, they grabbed so. your water bottle and they're like, you can't grab it? You can't I, grab no, it. I don't know. Anyway, it's They'll crazy. They shit in their bed. Yeah, right. <laughs> you never know. It's just weird all around, so I don't get involved in that kind of stuff. But this uh, this thing is like, I, I could see it going really, really well and becoming something that an L.A. crowd would love or a New York crowd would find interesting. If it's funny and the music is incredible and the lyrics are fantastic and they don't let him off the hook, I could see it working. But Weirder how things do you have not, worked. How do you not let him off the hook if you blame it on an alien glove? Well, because he still did it, right? Yeah, but well, we don't know what yeah. the musical is going to be. Or, right, right. right. We, we if, don't know if they're exactly. actually going to is this so, say this is what happened, right? Maybe if the it's gloves just, not used as a cop out to right. say, then then I think it's it can still work. But or it could be totally fucking wild, like like mm. it could just be like a Little Shop of Horrors where That's it's all I mean. fantastical yeah. and yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. granted, Little Shop of Horrors is the, like the best musical what ever. What was the but. Demento one with the sing along with Neil Patrick Harris? What was that one? Oh, oh uh, Doctor Horrible. Yeah, it could be something like that. Right. Going back to what you said though about the Holocaust actually happening right uh i think that most most people who actually it's not most people there's a third of the population doesn't believe the holocaust took place which is fucking insane that's a real fucking statistic which makes me want to gouge my eyes out but if you are an actual human being who lives on this planet and is like a a functioning person you know that the holocaust took place so i uh, i think that Jojo Rabbit takes less of a risk because it's not like you watch that movie and you think, whose side are you on, though? Right. Yeah. Like, anybody who watches that movie who's like, mm, but I can see what the Nazis were thinking right. is a psychopath, and mm-hmm. we've determined that. Mm-hmm. If you're watching this movie, I would say it's 50-50 right mm-hmm. now. People believe Michael Jackson did this. People believe mm-hmm. Michael Jackson mm-hmm. didn't do this. So, And it's so, so recent. Like, mm-hmm. I just... I, I don't know. It's almost like they need to wait a decade yeah, I, to, I, I in order to get that. laughs from this because I don't know if if people can laugh at this yet. It's so current. <coughs> but then again, think about Maybe. like when did OJ come out with his book, right? right? I if mean, I there's did just it or whatever. yeah, it's like crazy Wasn't shit like, that like people during do the civil trial. Yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, if I did it, right? Yeah, if I, I mean, did that's it. It, like, what, did it do well? Right, uh, yeah. it was going mm. to do well until they. They took uh, all the proceeds. Yeah, for Goldman the, for the sued. Yeah. Right, right, right. <clears throat> and said you have to give all the proceeds to me or to charity or something like yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah. That's it. see, that was the first glove <laughs> musical they but, should have done. But here's the thing I want you all to think about. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Sorry. Fair. Oh, nice. Jesus Christ. Terrible. But I don't think most people would disagree that he did it. So <laughs> that's you know? true. Right. That's a good point. But I also think it's, most I people mean, would he, not want to see a musical about it. And that. he wrote a book mm-hmm. about it. He, he did, did, he did. So there you go. But you look at the situation, look, I I find always I find this to be fascinating for people who are like Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp. I'm like Johnny Depp has always been a weird guy. Just because yep. when he started out, you loved him for being weird, doesn't mean he stops being weird, becomes popular or mainstream. Right. He's at that age where 
like he could give a fuck about being weird. Like all of us who get older, like we start to care less and less about. We just want to be ourselves. But you know what? And so he's weird all the time. You this know what? Being thing. less weird, the being more weird has gotten him though less good of a performer. Uh, probably. Like, yeah. I, I, I although I like him in Black Mass. He's fantastic in Black Mass. That was only a few years ago. He was good in that. But the other he, stuff he's he just was, playing like I thought good, but I didn't think it was his best performance. Mm. Uh, I think that he. He was growing up to me. He was the most talented actor on the planet. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought that he was everything. On and what, what, because of what movies? Just when he was younger. Everything. Everything he did. I mean, he could be the sexiest man in the room or be a fucking pirate. Like right. he, mm. and, who's also the sexiest man in the room. Mm. Like I just, I, I loved him. I love. I thought he was so, so great. And to me, he was like it was like Brad Pitt, Leo, Johnny Depp. Like that was those were the people I was watching. Yeah. Uh, ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. And now, John of course, Cena. always. I don't know. I feel like he's made some a series of bad choices for his roles. And uh, whatever, that's not completely relevant about this. I'm just saying that it, he might not give a fuck, but I yeah. don't think it does well for his legacy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, yeah, like you said, maybe he doesn't carry there. And maybe it's also depends on like our we we live in this news bubble, right? Where mm-hmm. like a bunch of people just know Johnny Depp and Michael <coughs> Jackson as like artists, mm-hmm. right? They don't even fucking care about the actual personal news, right? It's, it's This is just because it's our world. So yeah, yeah. 95% of the country is not going to be able to see this thing because it's going to be in a limited run of in course. L.A. But it's probably that I mean, this is headline making titles here. So it it. It probably will travel to people, but I think it's the wrong time to do it. Mm. I, I think you got to consider the people that um, that are going to be offended by that. It's just funny because this totally seems like an article from The Onion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. so I thought it was, it. guys. I thought it was. Well, it I says June, June, January 25th, too. So, like, have they been in production already? Like, is this thing... Or January this 25th, January, 2020? Or is it 2021? I don't know. The article says January 25th. Let's see. Doesn't uh, uh, it? Alex, are you back there now? He is. Hey, yeah. Alex. Oh my God. Hi, hi everybody. Are you gonna go see the Michael Jackson's glove? Uh, Love I'm on his audition glove for this musical? thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, who are you trying to play? Um, is the glove an option? I guess. Wow. Yeah, the glove role. is an option. <laughs> oh, I had a worse joke. And introducing Alex Marzonia as the glove. Marzonia. Marzonia. I was just listening to Hamilton how's, on the way up how's here. How's our theme song coming? Uh, it's 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 why it's there. It's there. It's there. <laughs> it's there? It's in my mind. Oh god, don't All do right, that. Don't do a Hamilton. Let's hear a little bit of this. it. Um Ooh. I do you have my guitar? Or do you have a guitar? Man? There it is. <laughs> Close. Totally. Close. Totally. I hate that Cody's made me like sugar ring. <laughs> Mark, what else you got for us? Any other news? Well, we could yeah, there's a bunch of news. Um I like this news that Colin Trevorrow, we didn't really cover it. Um he did get credited for story by on uh, Rise of Skywalker because he did he was originally going to direct it did enough work on the script that the Writers Guild gave him the story by credit cool. so he decided that he's going to donate all of his residuals to charity right That's what cool. charity I'm going to find out right now um, glove charity oh boy please I hope not what, um, what part did he write like Ray running in heels <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh boy I love him I'm sorry I had to do it I could not do it I didn't get a ding from Cody no. <laughs> I don't know if it deserved it. I know. The, exali- uh, the Alexander Divine Hospice, which helps mm. families in the most challenging of times. He's right. going to be uh, donating all his proceeds, the re- uh, residuals from Rise of Skywalker to that, which could be a gigantic That's chunk. pretty fucking cool of him. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. As a family who's had to use hospice before, they, mm-hmm. are, they yep. are not only the most necessary thing, but like they deserve all of the money. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That and is it's, a tough fucking job to yeah. sign up for. And fucking it's yeah. the... They're like saints. They're yeah. angels. Yeah. Yep. It's they the really Alexander are. Divine Children's Hospice. So mm-hmm. we know exactly what, what that's about. So the fact that he's doing it to that's that charity... So is pretty amazing. I mean, I I think this guy is a solid guy for doing this because we know what happened. He get like after Book of Henry, that yeah. was it. It was like we don't know if it, that was the reason that it bombed so bad, right. or if it was creative differences with Kathleen Kennedy behind the scenes. But either way, this guy is coming out, and I I got to hand it to him because that's a lot of money coming in from Rise of Skywalker. Those How much residual- money do you think that actually is? I would say in the millions. You think so? Really? Wow. Yeah. If you're getting a story by credit. 
Good for him, then, for doing that. At, good for at his level. Oh, good for him. Uh, Cody, let's open up the phone lines. We only have 10 minutes before we are cutting to commercial to go get our friend Chad Michael Collins to come in. Yeah. Uh, he's got a cool thing that we're talking about, guys. Call yeah. of Duty, man. Yeah. He's in the Call of Duty game. I'm going to leave it for him to say. Sorry, I was too fine. excited. Uh, but Spoilers. we'll take a couple calls before he does get into here. What do we want to use as our call noise today, guys? As our what? Call noise. Yeah. Sugar Ray? Um, or Fart? Sugar Ray? What? What's that? I mean, I always like the cat. The arrow pouring the blood in the D cup. I think. Uh, oh yeah, do we we need a, we need oh, a pour sure. blood you in the D cup? I don't have a sound bite for that, John. I think the can scream is a perfect one? sound bite for that. <coughs> yeah, can you make a scream for scream, can scream you, when there's a call? Then. Cody, can you do a sound bite for vagina life? <laughs> there, there you go. go. Perfect. Well, no, it, was that a test or is that real? No, I think that's real. <laughs> Caller, you're <laughs> live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's AJ from Lafayette, Louisiana. AJ, welcome to the show. What do you got for us today? Well, first off, um, I'm loving this new format, Dorina and Roxy. You are awesome. I'm just enjoying this so much. Um, AJ, I appreciate so that. You're the best, AJ. About a year ago, I guess, is the first time I actually called. And funny enough, it was whenever the Captain Marvel trailer had just dropped. And so the um, today with the Black Widow trailer, I got to admit, um, I'm still not 100% on board for this. It, it's so weird because knowing what does happen to her, it it just it doesn't feel like as big, especially being the first movie after in game. I almost wish it was kind of like a even farther back prequel. Whenever uh, you always hear about the, um, the big incident with um, uh, Hawkeye mm-hmm. and, and uh, Black Widow. So I was kind of wishing it was something bigger, but being it's the first official thing starting phase four, I just, I'm not 100% on board. I'll watch it probably at some point, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. Uh, thanks, AJ, for calling in. What do you guys think about that? Are yeah. you feeling not not on board? Well, I know no, we I, discussed it a little bit, but... No, I agree with them. That's exactly how I feel. I, I said I, I, it looks Still good, minimal. seems fun. I'm going to watch it. Uh, it's hard to get knowing what happens in Endgame. That's going to be on the filmmakers. Make me care, and I, and I think they will. It's a Marvel movie. It looks great. I always love Marvel movies, so we'll see how it lands mm. for that storyline. John, do you think this shouldn't have been the first movie out after Endgame? No, I mean, the, uh, uh, it's overdue. When when do you drop it? Like, yeah. uh, I mean, they, if you wait any longer, I think it loses all its steam. I think this is the time to go. I think she's sympathetic because she has died. I would, I think, I'd reverse the uh, approach I have about it, AJ. And I would say because she has died, it makes me want to see her backstory and character. I mean, wouldn't you want another Iron Man adventure? Wouldn't you want another Captain America adventure? Even though they both like have what happened to them in Endgame, you would. Why not? Yeah, and I feel like the first movie that you're going to release that's uh, after Endgame mm-hmm. should be one of the Avengers, right? And right. what better to this the, the one one of other, other than Hawkeye, she's the one that really hasn't gotten her right t- time to shine, right? She's always kind of like a side character. So, and it announces Florence Pugh as one of the pillars to the new Avengers going forward. That's a positive. Fuck yeah, she got hot on the scene so fast. Oh yeah. Because she's like a freak of nature. So badass. Yeah. I agree. Can you let amazing. us know when you have another call? <laughs> Caller, you're on Collider it. Live. What's your name? It. Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Garth from Boston, Mass. Hey, Garth. Garth, my favorite. Hey. What's going on? How's home? All right. I miss it. Good to see you. All right. Good to talk to you. Um, I have a theory on the uh, Rise of Skywalker. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Agents from the Emperor are going to find Ray's, one of Ray's used lookups. They're going to use the blood to uh, get the Metachlorines and clone her. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh! oh. Crack it, son. Bringing it full circle. That's Boston Mass Woo! right there. I That's have, Boston Mass. I honestly Mass. have never felt this proud. I was like, okay, Garth, okay, Ray, and then Blood Cup. What's, Garth, what is thank you oh. for making me proud. Oh. Holy shit. Oh. And, uh, best call we've gotten excellent ever. Excellent theory. Uh, <laughs> let, thank you so much, Garth. Let's you, talk about this. You know what? This. Yeah. Yeah, way to go. Guard comes in Imagine and he actually jumps in the conversation, brings in a callback. Yeah. I mean, that's how you do it. Imagine if that is like they trolled us so hard that they did something ridiculous like that. They were just like, fuck you guys. You thought Last Jedi was divisive? Boom. 
We'll give you something to all hate. At least you can be on the same team. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Ray on her period would definitely cause Jesus something. Christ. Opening scene. We see Ray. It's a close up on her face, really intense. What's happening? What's that? We pan oh, out no. on the toilet. It's Ray. <laughs> Does Ray go to the bathroom? The force theme plays. <laughs> we got it. We, we're, so much we're in so much room. Let's take one more call before we go to Chad. One more call before Chad body. Michael Collins. Caller, you are on Cloud Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it is Nathan from, from Texas. Hey Nathan. Nathan. hey, Nathan. Thanks so. for calling in. What's going on? What do you got for us today? Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys. Oh, it's just a theory that I've been thinking about um, for The Watchmen. Oh. Okay. Uh, since you guys, since I know you guys are a big fan of it. Hmm. Um, I always thought that Lady True is the daughter of the comedian. <laughs> oh, s- sorry, Roka just took his headphones off. Have you not seen <laughs> I last episode? I wanna, I'm seeing it today. I okay. want to respond, but Roka... No, you guys respond. Okay, here, uh, my question to you is, then do you think that Silk Spectre is not? No, no, no. I believe Silk Spectre is, but do you remember when the comedian killed the Vietnamese woman that was pregnant with his so-called quote-unquote child? I do yeah. remember that. I do remember that. It was fucking vicious. Yeah. It made me... Ugh. Yes. Wow. That, that wow! Because you want to know what's wild, too? Sorry, I'm about to really spoil something. Spoilers. Spoilers for Watchmen episode 7. Uh... She says uh, that she doesn't know where, you know, her dad's going to be there, too, but he's not yet. Right. Yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. What? <laughs> Nathan, good. Garth, what is up with all these amazing callers that yeah, are just these, blowing our minds today? That's great. Wow. I, Nathan, I'm obsessed with that. Uh, we have to stop talking about it because we need to have Roka back in Sorry. the conversation. But Thank you, Nathan. Yes to that. Yes. Actually, yes. That makes yes. sense. You gotta watch this episode, dude. I, yes. I watched no. it. We watched it again I last night. I forgot about that panel. Days, so. Wow. <coughs> All right, we're, we're done talking about that. Actually, Sorry. I decided I want to take one more call before we yeah, get the break. Yeah, And you know what? I do what I fucking want. Oof. That's what happens yeah. when you listen to Eminem on the way here. Call That's right. Know when we have a call. Damn, call. Maxie. You're on Collider Live. What's your name? Where are you Emineming from? Oh boy. Rapping. I am Chris. Hey, Chris. Where? Uh, where did you say hey. you're from? Cleveland. Cleveland. Nice. Hey, Chris, Chris. From Cleveland. What do you got for us today? I wanted to know if you guys saw the Just Mercy trailer. It's like a, the second trailer for it, and it looked pretty good. I feel like this movie's going under the radar, but it looks excellent to me. Chris, say the name of the and movie again. talking about it. Just Mercy. It's just with, uh, oh, yeah. Jamie the Michael B. Fox Jordan one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just released the second trailer, and it looks great. Like, no one's talking about it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to know what? I don't even think I ever heard of the movie. Uh, Mark, can you read us a synopsis? What yeah, yeah. I'll just Mercy. That. Yeah. Oh, Isn't yeah, yeah. The, I've uh, seen I've seen this uh, poster, but I really don't even know what this is about. When is it coming out? So uh, it comes out Christmas, Christmas I think. And, yeah. then I, and then I think it opens wide and uh, like January 10th, I want to say. Wow. Yeah, Chris, I did th- see this trailer. Thank you for calling in, Chris. You did see it? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, second it, one you uh, said that just came out? Yeah, the second one was yeah, yeah. a couple days ago. It's good. Yeah, I, I, what, I, I'm what definitely is it about? I don't know. Ro- like, Roca, what would you say? It's like, yeah, oh, right. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I got it. Uh, the powerful and thought-provoking true story, Just Mercy follows young lawyer Brian Stevenson, played by Michael B. Jordan, and his history-making battle for justice. After graduating from Harvard, Brian might have had his pick of lucrative jobs. Said he heads to Alabama to defend those wrongly condemned with the support of local advocate Eva Ansley. Uh, one of his first and most incendiary cases is that of Walter McMillan, who in 1987 was sentenced to die for the notorious murder of an 18-year-old girl despite a preponderance of evidence proving innocence and the fact that the only testimony against him came from a criminal with a motive to lie. Mm. Is Larson Brie Larson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. This movie's not on my radar. And now it is? No, there you go. Right. A lot Same. of people are, or a lot of critics who've seen early screenings have been mentioning Jamie Foxx for a best actor or really? supporting actor okay. or best actor. Oh, best supporting maybe. You're I right. mean, maybe it's got best a crazy cast. Yeah. yeah it's cool. What, so. what is Jamie Foxx's history at the Oscars? He was nominated the he was nominated for supporting for Collateral yeah. and best actor for Ray the same year. One for Ray. Right. One for Ray. Yeah. Mm. And those are the two nominations he's ever had. I think that's the only Was he nominated yeah, well, for Django? He should have nope. been. No. Yeah. But I think yeah, two. I think he's only been nominated twice, Collateral yeah. and Ray. Yeah. Okay. And Amazing Spider-Man too. Damn. Of course. Electra is clearly his best performance. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much to Chris for putting that on my radar. Yeah. Now it's there. And Great call. The, there. The I name, love Michael I, B. Jordan so much. I heard the name, but I I didn't connect it. So, yeah. All right. Shay Jackson. Jr. Well, we're going to go to commercial guys when we come back. We have Chad Michael Collins with us. We're talking Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> 
my name is John Paul Jones. Hey everyone, this is John Roga. John Roga. John Roga. John C. Make it big. Make it big. Welcome back to Collider Live. We are here with Chad Michael Collins, who uh, last time when he was in here told us there was something big on the horizon, but I couldn't even tickle it out of you. Yeah, you wouldn't tell us what was going on, but now we know. This is it. Yeah. Call of Duty, baby. Hey, congratulations, man. So how long have you known about this? Um, and how, when were you able to start talking about it? I, I, you, you know, I just missed the window when I was on with you guys yeah. this summer talking about my werewolf movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like literally a few weeks later, I was allowed. It was announced at E3, and I was allowed to say something. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't tease it too much. But um, yeah, I got this part a year and a half ago. How did that all mm-hmm. happen? Tell us about the process. Uh, straight up audition. And really? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lovely casting director named Emily Schweber. She brought me in. You know, everything is very NDA protected with these massive games. Yeah. So didn't know it was Call of Duty. Um, didn't know very much about the character, but just went in there, worked with the director and the writer. Uh, so one, I've never auditioned for a video game. What is it? Same as like regular sides that it would be for? Yeah, they'll give you you know the scene works to to do and stuff like that. But if um, you know you've auditioned for TV and film, you yeah. know you're working in a frame like this, uh, a, a mocap, a video game audition. They'll be like, use the space. Right. In fact, my audition was on the actual mocap stage where we ended up filming for the better part of a year. So I worked right with the director. We were, you know, sitting down, standing up. We had our weapons. The writer put me in a, you know, chokehold, you nice. know, as, as indicated by the scene. So it was really, it's very, very different. And it's, it's, it's a lot During of During your audition, the director put you in a chokehold. Yeah. Uh, no, not the director. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't pin that on him. Taylor Kurosaki was our wonderful narrative director on this. At Infinity Ward, he's awesome. But Brian Bloom, super accomplished voiceover actor and actor in general, he wrote this. And he was working with me on the scene. So mm-hmm. with the one, you know, I come in in the video game, and I'm I'm trying to embed myself with Freedom Fighter. So we kind of shot one of those scenes in the audition. So he's like, "Hey, is it cool if I, you know, we, we get a little rough, we get some realism in this and whatever for all the cameras?" And I was like, "Absolutely, whatever." So next thing you know, he's dragging me in by a chokehold and plops me down in a chair, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, this is going to be a really fun audition." Was this your first yeah. time doing motion capture, or, or have you done it before? Uh, I had done a little bit before that, but nothing of this scope or, or magnitude. What about a video game? Uh, I mean, I did the the one of the Star Wars cinematic right. trailers things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And there's another game called Hidden Agenda that I worked on for a few days as a supporting character. But uh, this was my full, first full on real deal experience. And it's Call of Duty, man. It this is. is like one of the biggest no titles yeah. ever. And we were talking a little bit off air. I played this game, every game that mm-hmm. came out, I would play it, but I'm a campaign guy. Right. I can't, I get killed, sniped in the face oh, yeah. every time I go online with, with these professional Same. gamers. What is it like being, it's back, the campaign mode is back now for this yeah. particular game. Yeah. And so, you're the lead of it. Exactly. You know, and they, they crank out a new Call of Duty title just about every year around this time, you know, the October, but they haven't had a campaign in the last yeah. few games, Black Ops 4 and stuff like that. So all the fans were not only excited that Modern Warfare was back mm-hmm. after, you know, eight, nine years, but that there was a campaign they could play through. So the response has been phenomenal and very, very flattering, and the fans have loved it, and many are calling it the best campaign that they've ever done or, or since way back in the day. So we're all very proud of, of that response to it, yeah. Are you a gamer? I am. I am a gamer. Yeah, were you a big Call of Duty fan before this? I played all the original Modern Warfare series, which are yeah. you know, some of the classic Call mm-hmm. of Duty games back in the day. And I went through and played them again, obviously, when I found out this was the part and uh, this was the project. But uh, I don't play as many first-person shooters as I used to. Mm-hmm. Kind of a Warcraft PC guy. Right. I like to dip back into the retro Nintendo, Super Nintendo stuff yeah. as well. But um, this game was a lot of fun for me to play through. I, my friends make fun of me because I love playing games and I'm just god awful like the worst you've ever seen like, I don't you're really, not good at any of them uh, like literally none of them D like I'm so bad at it I need I need some pro tips like I can't uh, somebody has to seriously like sit with me and talk me so through even it. like yeah. whether it's a first person shooter or like a you know Mario game oh, like a simple my god I, 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 I learn one move and then I'll do that wh- kind of similar to what we were talking about before mm. I family guy it <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it until it, it somebody like over and over. I can't do anything. Like right. there's something there's some kind of disconnect. I I, I really don't know what it is. But uh, growing up, my brother was obsessed with Call of Duty, right. mm-hmm. and I literally like I, I would get slaughtered. Yeah, I just. If you're bringing back really well, tough we, I mean, what again. Mark was saying, you know, that multiplayer, that's a yeah. whole different animal. Like that's, these, oh, yeah. that's why that's I was excited yeah. for the for the campaign because I can do it at my speed right. and, and right. I can and learn the makes mechanics. Fun of me. Yeah. And nobody makes yeah, yeah no one makes fun unless of we're yeah. sitting in the same room. Right. Cause, yeah, because I, I mean, and so to you, do you do you go on those online things when you would play Call of Duty, or are you strictly a campaign guy? I, like me? I mean, I'm a campaign guy. I yeah. like the story mode. You know, yeah. you're right. There's no one to laugh for you when you drop drop a grenade on your your foot, and mm-hmm. blow yourself. Up and, Every and respawn. Time. So, but I, I think I will get into the multiplayer stuff. I won't be good. I'll probably never be good. But I've had a few invitations from uh, Twitch streamers and stuff to come on and and to play. So, you know, hopefully we'll we'll let people laugh at me as I embarrass myself. With the, <laughs> the real ninjas out there. Yeah, yeah really. So this is exciting for you, especially because I know you can't you can't talk about that stuff until and especially for video games, it just takes so long to develop them. Right. So you just I'm sure you've been dying to like actually be able to talk about. It. It's like, is there other stuff that you actually can talk about? you're excited about you're working on is this something that you're like holy crap this is like this is it like this is like how Next just level. as an actor mm-hmm. like what how do you feel right now yeah i mean it's been it's been awesome not only because i was a fan of this franchise but we knew we had made something really cool mm-hmm. and with the way that the video game technology increases exponentially every single year if you play through this campaign it's like one seamless no fade to black one seamless you're in a cutscene you morph right into the character play the mission and you morph right back out into a beautiful cinematic cutscene and you just keep going so mm-hmm. it's like a, it's really like a 7 hour interactive movie right. so we we were really excited for people to have that totally immersive experience and it was just flattering the fans got really attached to my character Alex Echo 31 uh, who makes kind of a um, spoiler alert, a little bit of a heroic sacrifice at the end. And mm. I was getting all these comments, how much they loved Alex and how much they cried at the end. And wow. when I played through it, I even got a bit emotional. There's some that's, really high drama in, in the game. That's the thing about video games nowadays, too. Like, I remember I played the, what was it, the Telltale games, like Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. I was like, that shit made me cry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to cry during video games. Yeah. So the Last awesome. of Us. Right. Have you played The Last of Us? That was one of the oh, best yeah. games yes. I've ever uh-huh. played story-wise heard as that. well. Yeah. Um, but I want to go back chad the filming of this you said it was like a year how long were you yeah. involved you were shooting in like, for a year and well it, like off and sort on of. yeah the, those were the outside dates but uh within that we i, I probably did between 20 and 25 actual sessions so okay. you know how um, long's a session what's that look like i mean it's just a full eight ten hour day you know what have you uh in terms of the full full performance capture motion capture everything else 
Um, so we, we would come in and, and a week, you know, once a month, we'd come in for like three or four days on a week, mm-hmm. do a rehearsal day. We'd, we'd shoot out some stuff that was planned, and that just kind of happened over the course of a year. About every month, month and a half, we'd come in and we'd gear up for, for three to four days of shooting. And then we had a bunch of voiceover sessions afterwards right. to fill in all the battle chatter and the in-game stuff. How um, physically, like, draining was it? Because, I mean, you're super fit. Like, you always post, like, your Instagram, like, super hot selfie or, or like, your, like, six-pack yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, you look like you don't eat a donut ever. So, like, was it physically? It's actually <laughs> been years. But, uh, yeah. It's been years since you had a donut? Yeah. Damn. But you're on Call of Duty. What? <laughs> I guess that's the payoff. Yeah. 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 But was it physically like hard or, or like how much with motion you capture? Because I have no idea that type of acting. Well, well, you know, to save us all the effort, you know, they they had real deal kind of stunt performers come in and, and do the in-game stuff, the ducks, the rolls, the diving, the mm-hmm. whatever else. So we were mostly responsible with the cinematic cutscenes and the mission intros and outros and stuff like that. So it wasn't as rigorous. I mean, there's certainly our share of drama, yelling and screaming and dragging bodies, you know, across the uh, the mocap set. But as people do, yeah. <laughs> well, they left the they let the actors do most of the the acting, so yeah. it wasn't too terrible. You know, it was an a- AC controlled sound stage, yeah. which was nice, not you know melting in the heat. I don't feel bad yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah it was. Put it that it was, way. He can't eat donuts <laughs> okay. though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, talked a but... little bit about the fan reception and that people were saying that they loved your character. Do you find it to be a different fan base, a more vocal, less vocal, kinder, whatever, than when you're in movies, TV? It's a video gaming fan base just to completely... Yeah, I've always found the fans to be lovely, and you know, we're drawn to scale. It's not like I've you know, got a following like Chris Pratt or anything, but mm-hmm. they've been <laughs> wonderful and it, especially in terms of this game i've never had such an outpouring of you know support and like love i mean i've seen cosplays there's been halloween costumes already wow. for alex like a week after it dropped you know people are doing fan art and all the wonderful things that you? fan do oh yeah yeah oh, wow. yeah which is really really cool and um it's just been a really overwhelmingly positive response and you know we did our job they got attached to alex and you know when alex goes boom boom bye bye maybe mm, who knows maybe. Mm. but now they're the fun next wave of this is if you remember from the old call of duty modern warfare trilogy there's a very popular character called ghost mm-hmm. and this was kind of a reboot of modern warfare in general so there's all these videos with millions of views speculating that alex is really going to become ghost and he's not really dead mm. it's been really fun to watch and that just shows you the level of attachment they had to this character that they're speculating that he could actually be someone else or turn into someone else. This has been really fun to just sit back and watch. What do you think? What do I think? Yeah. I have no opinions on the matter. I, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know it was Call of Duty when I got the job. Like, they didn't tell right. us until we were filming on day two what, what? this actually was. Wait, you are already yeah. filming you, and then they tell yeah. you? Yeah, so we were flying blind the entire time. So you can imagine I know nothing to their designs on Alex becoming someone else or if he's alive. Or, I have nothing. I'm on a, I've been on a need-to-know basis was there Maybe rumblings? Were people saying, like, oh, based on this, we kind of think it's Call of Duty? Or was everybody like, uh, no yeah. idea, some kind of game? I mean, you could kind of put the pieces together. Like, I had to do all these incredible amounts of highly detailed scans, right. and we did that down at Activision, uh, Marina Del Rey. And I'm like, I'm putting the pieces together now. I'm like, I think this is what this is going to be, but I'll let it come from them and not speculate. But you sign on to it without knowing what it is. Basically, yeah. Everything's under doctored names and everything else. And, and they hint and they tease at what it is, but until things are really ramping up and going, then, of course, they told us what it is, and we were NDA protected and everything, too. Yeah, what, what, so what's that process like? I mean, when you get do the full-body scans and you're like, huh, and you're piecing it together, that's at Activision, though, right? Is that what you said? That and one so, particular piece of equipment they used to do a lot of that stuff was down there. Okay, yeah. so you can look up at the building and go, yeah. All right. And it's Call of Duty stuff, all yeah. the lobby and everything Wait, what else. What do you guys so, mean? Yeah. What what is, is Activision is a it's, 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 it's a, a game maker. Game so when you yeah. when you like see Activision, right, games. right. Yeah. Mm. So you could like if you shows this up at Nintendo, if you show up at like Nintendo and, and you're getting scanned and you're seeing like little Mario Kart, you could right. be like, all right, yeah, you know, could yeah, be get it now. basically putting together like Naughty Dog. I know is another right. um, a well known video game maker and, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So that's yeah. when you were super they, they grateful you had had the donuts. Uncharted, yeah, yeah, yeah right, scanned, for sure. <laughs> is this something that you would want to do again? Absolutely, one of the best experiences I've ever had. And they brought in really top flight actors because you know the way the video games, as you can just see from the trailers that you see on TV now, it's the, the old way it used to be. 
we'd render everything in a computer, we'd shoot some stunt guys out, and then we'd just throw a voice behind the character. But mm -hmm. now, because you always have a, a, an extreme close-up on this helmet rig that you wear, you always have extreme close-up, but you always have a wide shot because there's 60 cameras on a mocap stage. So you need actors to be able to do it all. It can't just be digitally rendered anymore. You need someone in the suit who can do the micro-expressions and the big acting stuff, mm -hmm. you know, what, whatever that entails. So they put together a really unbelievable cast. We had a blast. I mean, obviously the game is a bit dark. It's gritty. It's real. It's about war. It's not pretty at times, but we had the time of our lives because I think all the cast are from, you know, the 80s video game generation when things really started to blow up, and we all had that background in that. So it was, it was doubly cool for us. Did That's you know it. anybody you were working with, or it was all new people? I was aware of, of a handful of them. We'd kind of, you know... Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon throughout our careers and everything, but yeah. uh, I became really close when we became pretty good friends with all of them, and, and um, I hope to see them all again soon, but uh, it, it, we were all kids in a candy store. It's just something different and cool as an actor being immortalized in a video game For sure. yeah. as opposed to something else. Yeah. Is, it, is it different when you walk on the set of a video game and you're getting ready to do your take versus like being on camera for a movie? Do you get like do-overs or is it like going to screw up the technology if you yeah. flub a line? Great question. That's a, that is a good question. Yeah. And that's what makes video game filming unique is that between action and cut, everything's got to be perfect. Yeah. There's no fixing that in an editing room because you're being filmed by 60, 70 cameras. That'd be a nightmare, right? So yeah. you have to be word perfect. You've got to, you know, hit your marks to a certain degree. You've, you know, you've got to be aware of the spacing and not put your hand through the chopper roof and right. all these other things that you're just kind of playing in this this imaginative sandbox. And so it came with its own unique challenges, but that's why we had the rehearsal days because it was kind of like a play mm -hmm. in right. that regard. So it was a very different filming process, but be because they were doing it all at once. Mm -hmm. In a film, you know, this is gonna be the close-up shot. And you prepare for that, the lighting set for that, everything else, and you, it's a piecemeal, it's one at a time. This was everything all at once. So it was a totally different experience and, and challenge in that way. Is there any ad-libbing? The, we tweaked with some stuff, you know, as we went on, but for the most part, we stuck by the book, just because when you're dealing with military jargon, that stuff kind of needs to be. You don't want to make that shit up. Yeah, that it <laughs> yeah. in advance, because you know, former and current military, you know, they love these games. They love, you know, the sniper movies that I do for Sony. Yeah, they're the ones watching and they're the ones playing. So you want to get that as right as possible. And we had two really amazing ex Navy SEAL uh, advisors, consultants oh, wow. on this. And they were, we got a day with them before we started filming. They were there every day wow. um, to really help tease out the difference between, well, this is how a freedom fighter would be working in AK. This is how USCIA, former Delta, would be oh, working Jesus. That's awesome. this. So it was really cool. And they, they always helped make sure that we were about as accurate as we, we could be, you know, as actors trying to portray these these soldiers that's, that's incredible like that's yeah. the thing about video game development like these people just like there's so many teams around you trying to make sure that everything is not just looking good but also specific like yeah. that's insane and they pulled new punches i mean they they talked to you know war correspondents from these areas in the middle east they they really wanted to dial in and get it as accurate as possible you know it's it's called modern warfare and mm. Modern Warfare today looks different than what it looked like for Modern Warfare 3 in 2011. So right, right. they told a unique story, particular to our, our present day. And for that reason, they, they pulled in all the heavy hitters to make sure that they were kind of portraying this. Yeah, I mean, it's still a video game, right? right. But they wanted to lend as much authenticity to it as, uh, as they could. Were you surprised by that, by them bringing in Axial and people that were that are vets or were you surprised with to the lengths that they went to not really yeah. you know i mean it this is this is you know, i mean the one thing that i discovered about call of duty when people would be like well what are you working on right now be like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm working on a video game it's really cool we're having a lot of fun and they'd be like it's call of duty <laughs> and, oh, yeah. it's not quite star wars ubiquitous but mm -hmm. it has that global appeal they've been doing it for 20 years it's been one of the top selling games consistently for all time so it, it was yeah it's it's I, it, it didn't surprise me that they pulled, didn't pull any punches with this sort of stuff because the franchise is that big and there, yeah. there are so many fans. And they, go, they tend to go back in time, too. And one of my favorite Call of Duties is World War II, right. where you get yeah. to play back in those days. Would mm -hmm. you want to come back for something like that if they went to oh, another that. World War II? And I wonder yeah. what that filming is like versus when you're doing modern right. warfare. Yeah, what would right. be your favorite? What would be the one that you really wanted to do the most? 
Um, honestly, I was always a big fan of the modern warfares, mm -hmm. but the World War II stuff is is incredible. It's, it's fascinating to me as a as a person, as an actor. Yeah. So I would I would do that in a heartbeat. But the funny thing is, whether it's World War II, whether it's Vietnam, whether it's you know World War III in the future, mm -hmm. you're still in that soundstage, and there's yeah. nothing there except apple boxes and PVC pipe riggings representing choppers and Hummers and whatever mm -hmm. else. So you still have to have that kind of that really playful, imaginative element, which makes yeah. it really fun. Did you find it incredibly challenging? Not really. Wow. And I don't mean because I'm so good. Yeah. No, I just mean that. Um, You're well trained. Yeah. Working with Infinity Ward, the cool thing that I noticed right off the bat is like people who make video games love video games. Mm -hmm. Their attitude is amazing. They're always having fun. They do this and they put in those insane hours because they love it. And it was that energy was really contagious from day one. And like I said before, dark material. Had a lot of fun, you know, after Action and Cut, we, we had a lot of, of, of fun doing this game, and I would do it again in the heart. One of the best experiences I've ever had. Are people gaming on set? Are people gaming on set? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, I went into Infinity War at headquarters, and you would not believe the rows of, like, setups that they had. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sure. because they would host, you know, first looks. They would, you know, they work a lot with celebrities and influencers, athletes in particular, who love these games. So they have all these things set up all the time. Um, and, and you know they lot they let us play through some of the beta stuff. They let us play through really? some of the unfinished That's stuff. That's what I was wondering. Because really cool. I've seen the yeah. technology, and I know they were doing this for some like Star Wars uh, virtual reality, where you could see two actors walk on, and in the monitor they're on Tatooine, they're C three PO, yeah. they're R two D two. Was it kind of like that with you? Could you see yourself yeah. like automatically rendered and? in a scene but like beta beta as, as you said yeah yeah we um i mean in the in the campaign you're underground in caverns mm -hmm. you are doing you know missions under cover of night you are creeping through you know a townhouse that may be a hotbed for terrorists so we got to see crude renderings that would play up on the big tvs and monitors as we did it to give us a sense of the space of the world of the of the setting um you know and then there's us and then we see ourselves in the monitor. So now we're like doing dances and we're doing whatever else watching. It was just really, really fun That's cool. in and of itself. I kind of love that. Yeah, I love that. it's pretty cool. It sounds like a great yeah. set to be on. Cody, I do want to open up the phone lines. Any questions for Chad Michael Collins or things that we want to talk about anywhere yeah. in the nerd verse? Um, do we still want to do the scream when we get calls? I like it personally. We, <laughs> we had a freaky show, so we have a, okay. a screaming sound. Yeah, do it. there's some news out there that caused us all to scream inside. Yes. Sure. And yeah. also, do you even want to bring it up? Yeah. And also, Roxy's judgmental of my uh, feminine Life choices. hygiene. <laughs> so yeah. choices, apparently. Yeah. So. But I don't think that's as crazy as the Michael Jackson news. No, have you heard not. about this? I have not. Yeah. They're doing a, uh, Johnny Depp wants to produce a Michael Jackson musical that is about okay. how the glove, Michael Jackson's glove, is from outer space and took over Michael Jackson's body to do the things that Michael Jackson did. Interesting. A musical in how do, LA. How do you this is coming that, out in January. You watch it? I mean, sign me it up. Is, I, is, yeah. I want to watch it. It is the strangest <laughs> thing that I've ever freaking heard. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't be a surprise. All right, let's get to this. Call or call your uncle Clyde Alive. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Shane from Saskatchewan, Canada. Shane, Shane. happy to have Shane. you. What do you got for us today? Well, this is going to be a little bit of a wonky thing and a hot take, but I have a speculation about. Saul, one of our favorite callers. Okay. Oh, no, Saul. Okay. I think Saul is secretly in love with you, Roxy. Mm, I agree. Just let that sit there. Yeah. Mm. He is just scared to say it because it's like, oh, it's weird calling in. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, I think the reason he called in trying to get on your live stream is he really, really likes you, and I think. He's just scared to admit it. Shane, thank you so much for calling in. Appreciate that. Uh, with no context, Chad, thought, yeah. thoughts yeah, on yeah, that? Am I in love line? I thought this was Collider yeah. Live. Take on okay. that. Mm -hmm. I'll be Dr. Drew. <laughs> I'll put How it this way. What Please. if you have a crush on a somebody that hosts a live morning show? How would you tell this person you had a crush on them? Man, that is tricky, huh? Yeah, that yeah. is. That's like is trying tricky. to hit on the bartender. Would you? Mm, uh, yeah. So yeah. would you directly? Mm. Would you directly tell this person, or would you call them and constantly give them crap all the time? It's oh. like pulling my hair. Oh, so it's like fourth grade playground Correct. flirting. He came into my okay. stream last night too and was such a dick to me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know he cares. No, he my do? God, he just like. Uh, 
everything he says is mean. Like he comes what in so say? hot. I don't know, just shit about like the way that I speak or the angle of my computer or what anything, wow. anything and everything. So it's like pulling the hair in, in fourth yeah. grade. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's madly in love. I yeah. think he's really I mean. super duper not in love with me. <laughs> I think he is he's really absolutely. Not and he's in love doing with it me. like, and he's trying to get to you the worst way possible because you don't like that. Cody, all. help! Cody, Jane tell me when we have another Saul. call. Cody, right get me out of this. Oh. You know Saul's going to be calling in now. Oh my God! I really? Hope he does. Mm-hmm. You guys mm-hmm. think? I but hope like so. for somebody who hates me, he sure spends a lot of time watching me. Because he doesn't hate you. Uh, yeah. Because he's in love with you. And he Get ha- the net. Any hate you've gotten so far or mostly love? Not really. I, I wow. Every once in a while. What the hell? You know, there's a me. troll. There's there's someone that comes out of the Inevitable. cellar, wherever yeah. they reside. I don't know where trolls live. I got well, Jen, now that you've done, not, not often. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you've done all the, you know, you've done video games, movies, like what, is is there something that you're like, this is, I really want to do this one day? Like, is, or is there or a genre. Role or genre, anything yeah. that you're dreaming, that you dream of as an actor to, to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, I, I love doing the soldier stuff. I've been really fortunate to do that across a lot of different things. Right. Um, but yeah, I love sci-fi. I love comics. I'm a fantasy nerd. Mm. Like anything in those arenas, I'm in. So you, you know, really would take very little for me to say yes to something like that. So if you like somebody asked you to be a superhero, you'd be like immediately. Yeah, like, yes. I would. Would you okay. rather be in like a, a DC project, Marvel, Star Trek, Star Wars? Hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty open, but if I had to pick preferences. I'm more of a Star Wars guy than Star yeah. Trek. I'm more of a Marvel guy than DC, although I love them all mm. because, you know, they're great. How can you not? Nerd. Yeah, I'm nerd. Yeah, I'm a total nerd. You're oh, on the wrong nerd. show here. No, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> Heroes, villains, guys. Heroes, villains. Get our cool swag. All right. Caller, mm-hmm. you are on Collider Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Nick from Portland. Hey, hey Nick. Nick. Thanks for calling in from Portland. What do you got for us today? Uh, I just wanted to ask Dorena. Is there any way that you could make it mandatory that everybody watches Midsummer so we can get their review on it? Because I think personally it was one of the most underrated movies of the year. I thought it, the movie was fantastic. I agree, and thank you for this call because it's definitely on my top ten of the year. Uh, not just because of Florence Pugh's performance, but uh, I love Ari Aster. I think, like as a as a movie, how it was directed, it is visually stunning. Mm-hmm. It, he did some stuff that was crazy, uh, with, like with with the cameras. Like I don't know if they did it in C, in CG and post, uh, but there's things that 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 were very subtle, like trees moving while people were on mushrooms, like just really weird stuff that I was just very impressed with all of it. And uh, I know that certain people have seen it and they were not into it, like Mark fucking Riley. Mm. Oh, is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked I liked two thirds of the movie. I, I was so that. into it. And by the time we were getting towards the climax of the film in the end, I just I fell out of it because I just just didn't do it for me. I'm sorry. I know. I usually love these movies. Did you I, th- I, I, so I appreciate good, all of it. I appreciate the filmmaking, everything you mentioned, the performances across the board, the, story, the weirdness, though? the story. The story was great. It, that's what got me towards the end there. I couldn't buy it all the way to the finale. I just couldn't buy it. Maybe we like, need to do a spoiler talk. Because we do. It's a we do. I have to see it movie. before we do a spoiler talk. Yeah. Yes. Maybe you should. You know. Maybe you should come on. Well, you on don't ra- like any of the movies I give you. You should come that's on. Not true. I like to write a Oh, that's true. Well, per- Parasite, though, you were like, that's all right. You, yeah, it was fine. Because <laughs> Midsummer, right? Eric? Do you see all these indie horror movies? Is that even the right name for it? <sighs> yeah. You did Hereditary, right? Yeah. Trying yeah. To yeah. See, because I adore by Hereditary. I'm the opposite. See, there we are. What do you think of Mandalorian? I love Land Mandalorian. Yeah. I think it's incredibly well done. Yeah. I really enjoy every single episode. And Yoda's always been my favorite Star Wars character. So seeing a little tiny Yoda. I get yelled at when I call him Baby Yoda. Yeah, I mean, he's probably not Yoda, right? He's, he's not. We all understand that. But as a culture, we call him that. Yes. Yeah. It's fine. There's a ton of people. There's probably more people that haven't seen the show that are in love with Baby Yoda than people right. who watch the show. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Are you and watching Watchmen? Yes. Which I love, oh, actually. Too. It's Guys, he fits awesome. in with the nerds. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. No, He's I, a nerd. Yeah, you got to come back, I don't just talk it. I mm-hmm. walk it, You're too. a nerd. Yeah, we a nerd. all know it. I'm a nerd. Well, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Chad Michael Collins, thank you so much for coming in today. Guys, thank you guys at home so much for watching. Don't forget our swag. Also, I just really want to win this competition, but the clothes also dope. Heroesvillains.com. Use the code LIVE10 for 10% off. Make us beat the crap out of these other shows. Thanks to Darina, Mark Riley, Cody, Alex. I'm Roxy Stryer. I'll see you tomorrow morning for Clatter Live.
I don't know what soundbite to play.